Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the AI Learning Lab. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see, can I get that to look more straight? Wait, do I want that side to come up? Or that side to come up? I don't know. This looks crooked to me. There, that looks better. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Kyle Shannon. This is the AI Learning Lab. We got some excitement in the house tonight. Open AI. <laughs> Looks like they had a boo boo. <laughs> they got rid of their, they got rid of their internet. So uh, we'll we'll wait for some some people to join. Uh, my name is Kyle Shannon. I'm a longtime entrepreneur. I've started a bunch of companies in my day. I was there for the early days of the World Wide Web. I started one of the first digital agencies in the mid '90s, and. Uh, the parallels between what's going on with generative AI and what was happening in the early days of the web is nuts. And so that's what this channel is all about. It's just talking about generative AI and answering questions and doing what I can to, to share, I don't know, I suppose my passion for what's going on. But it's, I don't know, it's more than just passion. I'm not just an enthusiast. I feel that it's really important. Anyway, um, welcome all. Uh, if you have any questions about AI, pop them in the comments below. We're just getting started, so I'm waiting for some folks to come in. It looks like the numbers are ticking up now, so it looks like the TikTok has has tossed us into the algorithm. So if you would, go ahead and hit, um, hit double tap the screen, hit the like things. That'll let people know we're here. What's generative mean to AI? Well, the way the tools work, if, you, if, if you're brand new to it and if you've heard of ChatGPT, the G in GPT is generative, so generative pre-trained transformer is what that stands for. And um, I'll talk about all these URLs in a second, uh, but back to the generative thing. It's actually generating original content, so that's what it means. Um, and there's a lot of tools out there that are using the, the, the T in GPT, which is the transformer model. So everything from mid-journey and stable diffusion that make those really pretty images, to chat GPT, to the, the music tools that make music, to the animation tools that do all that. All of that stuff is based on the same basic uh, transformer architecture. And then the generative piece means it's generating original stuff. Um, chat GPT is a class of things called large language models, um, where basically the, the P in GPT stands for pre-trained, meaning it was pre-trained. You don't have to bring your data. It's this really amazing machine learning algorithm that's been pre-trained. What's it been pre-trained on? Essentially all of the public internet. So think about the last 35 or 40 years of crap that's been uploaded to the internet. You know, brilliant, horrible, you know, good, bad, biased, unbiased, and everything in between. All of that is what it's been trained on. So tapping into the output of humanity that's made it to the public internet. Now there's, you know, I think that's five or 10% of what, you know, is out there in the world. You know, most of the data we can't see, uh, but it's still a remarkably massive set of data that, <laughs> that uh, ChatGPT has been trained on. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Kyle Shannon. I'm a longtime entrepreneur, and uh, this is the AI Learning Lab. So if you've got questions about AI, pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. The URLs I have on screen, here's what they're there for. If you haven't played with ChatGPT, that top URL, that's the official ChatGPT website. So go there, start playing. Um, the next one down is Bing, so that's Microsoft Search Engine. And uh, if you click on the chat button there, that's actually GPT-4 connected to the internet, which is now a bigger deal than it was last night, and I'll talk about that. And then you've got Poe.com, which gives you access to six different large language model models to play with. Three from uh, Anthropic, three of the Claude models, two from OpenAI, and one from Quora, from Poe, the, the company behind Poe. And then Prompts.chat, that little URL down there, will teach you about how to use these tools. It'll teach you about what prompting is. So if you don't know what prompting is, go to prompts.chat, it'll teach you, and then it'll give you lots of ideas about how you can sort of bend ChatGPT to your will. You can make it act like a certain kind of assistant or collaborator with you. So act like an accountant, act like a mathematician, act like a 
creative writing coach, whatever it might be. Um, so prompts.chat gives you lots of ideas for that. And then futurepedia.io, that is a, a directory of uh, uh, a sorry, the brain just shut down. Uh, futurepedia.io is a uh, directory of AI tools. So go play with those. So if you have questions, uh, pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you've got trolls, please be creative about it. Like boring trolls don't interest me. Creative ones are good. Ideally, a troll should be one that I can't tell if it's a compliment or a put down. Those are the solid ones. Um, what else? Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Uh, looks like it's about to do some major storming here in Denver, Colorado. So uh, maybe we'll get some different kinds of fireworks. Some, some coming down from the sky as well, and, as well as going up into the sky. All right. Let me see what questions we have here. If you were in sales, what type of AI would you sell now or in the future to make the most money? Um, that's a good question. I would I would investigate companies that are going to make that are making it easy for organizations to make their own data GPTable, right? So you've got ChatGPT that's been trained up on all of the internet. One of the next trends is going to be, well, I want to be able to do that for all of my company data. So there are a bunch of companies out there that are starting to play in that. Microsoft is going to be doing a lot of that because these generative AI tools are going to be built into Azure cloud services. They're going to be built into Windows. They're going to be built into Office 365, Dynamics. They're already built into GitHub GitHub with Copilot. It's all going to be called Copilot across the Microsoft suite. Um, that feels like the next big trend to me. Um, yeah, and then, and then short term... I, I think that you could probably sell, there's going to be a lot of agencies and consultants uh, putting, their, putting their hat in the ring going, I can help you figure out AI. Because at some point here shortly, if it's not already started, there's going to be a bit of a panic amongst companies going, we got to figure this shit out. Could someone help us? So there's going to be a lot of companies out there going, we can help you. So I think short term, probably consulting or AI centric agencies is probably a good sell and then I think longer term um, any companies or technologies that make it easy for other companies to GPT eyes their data because that, that's where my head is right now how do I generate videos on mid journey oh you type Slash video? I forget. Hang on. We can go. That's something we can go Google. Oh, I did a cool thing today in Sheets with GPT that I can show you in a bit. Um, but let me let me go Google this. Um, I'm actually going to Bing it because I have Bing as my default search engine now, <laughs> which I can't believe. I've been a Microsoft hater for three and a half decades. Um, let's see. Um, show... Videos in mid journey. <laughs> to create a mid journey process video, you must add dash dash video parameter to your prompt. Then, once the image has been generated, React to the bot's message by selecting the envelope. So let's go try. There's a mid-journey image that I made for... Oh, that's so, something I want to talk about. Something I want to share with everyone. So we're going to go here. We're going to go slash imagine. So if you haven't seen mid-journey, this is mid-journey. You, uh, you go into Discord, and then you type in command line, <laughs> command line <laughs> uh, interfaces to make images. And, you know, why do you have to do that, you ask? Oh, you know, because... So oh, that's good. Uh, let's so let's see. Uh, fireworks over Manhattan with Brooklyn Bridge in foreground. Oh, it's starting to rain here in Denver. I would think there's going to be some thunder boomers soon. So I'm going to go dash dash video. 
And I think that should be enough to just do something. All right, so here come the images. If you haven't seen Midjourney before, any of these generative AI things generate. Someone asked earlier, what's generative about AI? So it's actually generating these images. You notice how they start as kind of just these blurry noise noisy kind of images and then they get increasingly less blurry um that's the nature of the diffusion model they start out as kind of a, a mathematical average of a bunch of noised images and then it gets denoised over 50 or 70 steps and generates an original image which is super cool oh the rain she is coming down good I hope it doesn't hail too big, but you know. Okay, so this is almost done. And then reply. And I think I have to do reply with the envelope. Envelope. And you're asking, why do you have to reply with the envelope to get a video? I don't know, because <laughs> that's the way they, they made it. Uh... That does not seem to be doing it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're going to have to Google it. I can't figure it out now. It'll drive people crazy if I just sit here trying to figure it out. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome if you're new here. Uh, my name is Kyle Shannon. This is the AI Learning Lab. Um, -bum 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 -bum. couple of things to talk about tonight. Happy 4th of July to you, too. Uh, if you've got questions about AI, pop them in the comments below. Uh, sorry, I couldn't figure that out with videos on Mid Journey. I'll, I'll figure it out at some point here tonight if you're if you're still around. Um, I appreciate all your help, man. You're a public servant. Oh, I very much appreciate that. It's I have fun doing this. I I, I think it's important, but I also enjoy it. So, man, it's storming like a mofo out there. Wow. Oh, wondering what I'm drinking tonight. I muddled some cherries in the bottom of some cherry flavored seltzer because I know how to live, huh? <laughs> all right uh will it help blint i don't know what that means you got a burger what's the news okay so here's the news was surprised to see bing was disconnected from gpt4 today that's the news Cavruno has it all right so let me go show you something thing that you were a you know paid member of gpt plus You've got access to GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. And there used to be three options here. There was default, browse with Bing, and plugins. Like, literally within minutes of when I stopped my live last night, they pulled browse with Bing as one of the options. I'm not saying it's related. I, I'm not saying that OpenAI removed their connection to the Internet because they, was, they were upset with me that I stopped my live. But I'm saying the timing was suspicious. Um, no, what I think actually happened is, um, so about a week ago, um, ChatGPT, or no, OpenAI was served with a lawsuit from either a publisher or a group of publishers, basically saying because ChatGPT was trained on public books that they were the publishers of, that they were going to sue them. Uh, and then... Apparently, the Browse with B Bing feature of ChatGPT, in some cases, pulled content from behind paywalls, right? So, like, if you went to an article for the New York Times and you, weren't, you didn't pay for the New York Times subscription, you shouldn't be able to see that. But apparently, <laughs> ChatGPT could do that. Now, what's interesting is that the plugins that are connected to the internet still work. So I haven't actually tried this today, um, but someone in my... I made a video earlier, so let's try it. We're going to put on WebPilot, and then we'll say, let's go grab a URL. What's this? That's, that's the Twitter. Um... Here's docs.midjourney. So here's some documentation for Midjourney. 
Oh, uh, this is documentation on how to do. So I'm going to copy this URL. We're going to go to ChatGPT and I'm going to say, um, please summarize, spelled wrong, this. Now that should fire off the plugin that's connected to the internet. I love a good thunderstorm. Man, it's coming down. That's cool. All right, so it worked. It went out and it read that. It read the video parameter. To get a video link, you add dash dash video at the end of your prompt. You react with the envelope emoji. I thought I did that and it didn't do it. Anyway, so that works. And then the other thing that works still is if we go to bing.com, so this is one of the big three that I put up there as things you should go play with. So if you click on the chat uh, option, this is now chat GPT and it's connected to the internet. So I can say, um, is it going to hail tonight? Question mark. Oh, I probably should have told it in Denver. Searching for hail forecast. Hi, this is Bing. I'm glad you asked. Stop responding. I mean in Denver. So it should remember that I asked that if it was going to hail. Yeah, it says hail forecast Denver. According to the interactive hail maps website, there's 141 reports of on the ground hail by trained spotters in the past 12 months. No, I mean, wait. 12 months? No. I mean tonight. Do you have tonight's weather? Dee -dee 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 -dee. So, what's AccuWeather says? 3% chance of precipitation. 3% chance? It's fucking pouring out. <laughs> what the hell is going on? All right. Um, it, it actually gave me a link to AccuWeather. I wonder if it's current weather. Thunderstorm. Yeah, I don't know if you got it. Anyway, so, so what's interesting about all of that stuff is, um, it's, it's not just anything related to open AI being connected to the internet is bad and broken. It's just that chat GPT specifically, their implementation of how they incorporated Bing into their chat was breaking something with publishers. And I, I assume my, I, the TikTok I did this afternoon, I was like, I, you know, I'm just imagining some lawyer walking into someone's office going, pull that shit down immediately. <laughs> so I, I think that's what's going on there. Um, but anyway, wild, wild stuff. Super weird. It just started. Um, it just started raining. This though the same in India. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, no, it's coming down. Oh, there's people on a bike. <laughs> They're wet. Hello, I'm new here. Are crypto trading bots real? Crypto crypto trading bots? Uh, oh, are like AI generated crypto trading bots are real? They're very real. Um, if you AI services. I'm sure there's a whole financial tool section in there. But what you can do if you want to learn and, and you just want to get um, get up to speed with this is go to your crypto trading site. And I, ideally one where you're not trading real money, right? Where you can trade some fake money. You can do what is, whatever it's called, paper trading. Um, and, and one that's got bots. And then you can, you know, grab the code from a bot on that trading site. You can paste it into ChatGPT and you can say, here's a bot. Tell me what it does, and it'll tell you. And then you can say, what are some other, um, you know, parameters or some other options for how we can do a crypto trading bot? And tell it if you want it to be more aggressive or more conservative or more, you know, help you identify things. And it will rewrite the bot for you. You can pop it back in the site and, and start playing with it. So, yeah, they're very real. Whether or not there are tools out there that are actually good where you don't have to kind of roll your own, like I just described... Uh, that's that I don't know because I'm not I'm I'm not very much in that world. 
Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy 4th of July. Not send emoji. Not send envelope emoji. I've got to react with envelope emoji. <laughs> Wait, are you... Are you <laughs> Are you trying to tell... Oh, ad reaction. I see. Got it. This this, this is one of those... Um, is it going? I reacted. This, this is like one of those, um, you know, giving old people remedial... Um, <laughs> remedial uh, access... Oh, that's really interesting. So check out what this did. Huh. So I was I was in and and I reacted with the thing and then it popped a new server over here. Um Midjourney bot and so it created a separate little thing and now there's a video That should, it should, it's not playing. Huh, it's not populated. Strange. Anyway, all right. So I got it. So you got to react to it, not talk to it. Fine. It's like, it's like teaching an old guy how to use the internet. I know, it's painful. I get it. I get it. I get it. Welcome to Elder Talk. <laughs> Grandpa got a computer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh lordy, 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 lordy. All right. So there's that. Welcome everybody. If you're new here, my name's Kyle Shen and this is the AI Learning Lab. These URLs I have on screen are there for your viewing pleasure. Uh, they're really there. If you haven't played with ChatGPT, that top URL there is ChatGPT. Go there, start playing with that. Um, Bing.com is also ChatGPT. If you click on the chat button, it's GPT-4 connected to the internet, which, by the way, newsflash, OpenAI killed their um, their version of their GPT-4 connected to the internet yesterday after we uh, after I stopped going live for some reason. Uh, then Po.com uh, is also, you can play with ChatGPT there. And then Prompts.chat will teach you how to prompt, and Futurepedia is a directory of tools. Ask any questions you have about AI below. I'll do my best to answer them. We have fun here. I cuss occasionally, so if you don't like that sort of thing, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> All right. Does ChatGPT Plus give you Dal E and Whisper? No. But paying for... What I, what I don't know is if you pay for ChatGPT Plus, is that also paying for um, the API access, for credits on API? I don't think it is. Um, if you, if you, if you want to access Whisper, you have to go to platform.openai.com slash playground. Um, and I can actually show you how to do that. But Dali, you can call Dali from from within no code tools like Zapier. You can also use Dali for free at Bing.com, which I've got right there. Um, yeah, so there's there's some interesting um, some interesting things. So so uh, let me. Show you. I was working on a, a prompt here earlier. So if you go to platform.openai.com/playground then you come in here and you, you've got access to a lot of different models that OpenAI has available. This is more if you're a developer. You can flip into different modes, chat mode, complete mode, things like that. Um, and then there's also in the upper right-hand corner of the, of the thing here, there's the, this microphone, and this is Whisper. So if you want to test their transcription and things like that, you can either record things or upload video or audio files here. Um, and then, yeah, and then if you want to play with Dali, you can go to the, there's a website for Dali. Um, or if you just want to use it, you can go to bing.com. And so here we are at Bing. So I can say, uh, make me an image of a 
thunderstorm over Denver on the 4th of July. And it will just use Dali to go make something. And this is free. So if you want to program with it, you need API access. You can sign up for API access at platform.openai.com slash playground. If you just want to play with it, you can just play with it. That was pretty quick. Um, let's see. Can you add in fireworks? And hopefully it'll figure out what the hell I'm talking about. Sure, I can try to add fireworks to this image. The Dali stuff at Bing's pretty fast. I just, I wish Bing were better, or Dali were better. It's not a very good image generation tool. Mid Journey's much, much better. Look, <laughs> Thunder Boomers and fireworks. That one's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah? Sweet. All right. So there you have that. There you have it. There you have it. Hello, I'm new here. Oh, we talked about that. I get hives when someone mentions crypto. I know. Me too. It's like I spent a year of my life like deep, deep, deep diving into that world. Oh, and it just, I, you know, like the technology is really, really, really interesting. And the use cases were kind of interesting. And then the people were just money grubbing pigs. And it fucked everything up. And it's just gross. And so I do think that um, generative AI is going to drive a lot of adoption of, of those tools uh, once <laughs> once we have the uh, 2024 election and all the misinformation <laughs> makes people realize uh, we got to get our shit together and trust, you know, who we're getting this stuff from. Um, but I agree. The crypto stuff is a little oogie. <laughs> I went to use an AI... I went to use AI to automate an ongoing experiment. Oh, I want to use AI to automate ongoing experiment thoughts. That's way too general for me to have <laughs> thoughts. Like, I don't know which tool I would recommend. Um, if you haven't played with ChatGPT, so the chat.openai.com right there, um, I would go there and start playing if you're... Um, if you're technical, which I assume you are, if you're talking about experiments, I assume you're a scientist and can, you know, write Python and and crap like that. Um, if you can do that, you know, I would I would be using uh, Copilot at GitHub to to do some pair programming, and that that can help. So, um, if you don't want to get into all that and you want to use no code stuff, you could probably do some automation using tools like Zapier. So I've, I've been doing a lot of that. Um, I think it's potentially really good, but I would just start experimenting at chat.openai.com. Um, take some of the data from your experiment, pop it in there, figure out what your prompts might be to be able to, uh, you know, figure out what calls you need to make to OpenAI to do the analysis. But yeah, I, I would think so. Um, if you tell me a little bit more, I can, you know, maybe throw some ideas a, a, about there. Gen X core. <laughs> Gen X, baby! <laughs> Let's go! Can you use Midjourney to copy Amazon's photos and have it change them a little bit so it's your image? Yeah, you can You can do that. I mean, it's... You've got to... You, you've got... Okay, so here, here's the thing. Midjourney and Stable Diffusion have been trained on a lot of copywritten images, and there's a lot of lawsuits coming where people are probably... There's just going to be a lot of lawsuits coming. If you work for a big organization and you don't want to deal with that shit, use Adobe. Um, no, leave that on, please. All right. Um, use Adobe Firefly and generative, uh, generative fill within Photoshop. Uh, hang on. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so use Adobe's um, 
Firefly because it's been trained on non copywritten data. Now that said, Nid Journey is by far the best of the image generating tools and technically you can do to Bing, we'll go grab an image. So we'll go bing.com. We'll say, I don't know, image of uh, the buck tractor pull. I grew up in York, PA, so I've been to the buck tractor pull. Buck tractor pull. And we'll go images, and there should be some groovy. Yeah, we'll, we'll just take that one. So, so there's, a, there's a giant tractor <laughs> with a bunch of smoke coming out of it. So so let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna save this image as uh, Buck Tractor. And then we're gonna pop over here to mid journey. And I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna go find that image that I just saved to my hard drive. Buck Tractor. I'm going to upload that. So, so I just dragged it from the Finder. I'm on a Mac, so from the Finder on a Mac or whatever the fuck it's called in Windows, File Manager or whatever. So I just dragged it from that into the Discord, uh, into the MidJourney channel in Discord. Now I'm going to hit Return. So what that's doing is that's uploading this image to Discord, which is a requirement. So then you right-click or Control-click on a, on a Mac and you copy the link for that image. And so now I can say slash imagine. So I'm going to make an image. And the first thing I'm going to do is rather than type anything, I'm going to, I'm going to paste the URL for that image. So we're basically doing an image based on that image. And so now I'm going to say red um, tractor, uh, tractor billowing smoke and spinning the wheels while crowd roars spinning and then I'm gonna say photo of all right oh and I put photo of after red tractor but we'll see what it does so that should now generate us something that looks in the neighborhood of that but it should be a red tractor instead of a green one Whether or not it does anything, you know, remotely interesting or valuable, I don't know. But, you know, that's a way to do it. It obviously didn't. It didn't. It looks like it grabbed the green from that tractor. It's a completely different kind of tractor, although it is like spinning out, <laughs> spinning out on a dirt track, which is kind of funny. It didn't make it red. So you can do that. But this is this is actually a good example. The fact that it didn't quite do it great, um, you know. Um, we could we could potentially also do that over in um, with Adobe Fill. Let me or Adobe Generative Fill. Let me try something here. Let's go over to Adobe. We're gonna we're gonna go to Photoshop. I'm in Photoshop beta. I'm gonna pop that in there. And let's say, let's capture the tractor. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight this section of the tractor. I'm going to say, I'm going to say generative fill. Oh, you can't see it. God damn it. The, ah, <laughs> come on. Something about the dual camera does not make the, uh, the, uh, the focus work right. So anyway, down at this little bar here, I said generate. And I'm going to type in red racing tractor. Let's see what it does. Let's see if it actually fills that in and keeps it mostly the same and just makes it red. Sort of. It looks like the front of front of a a truck. 
Oh, that one's not bad. Yeah. I mean, you could mess around with that. You could probably get it. That's not, I mean, that's in the neighborhood. That's not quite right, but it's it's in the neighborhood. And then, you know, then you can do stuff like we could we could grab the the street down here and we could say generative fill as as fault wait as fault with yellow line and that should replace the dirt wow this is crazy it just got like you know how it gets uh that crazy orange color <laughs> when a storm gets crazy it's that crazy orange color let's see yeah there you go there's some there's some asphalt didn't give us a yellow line but maybe we have another one here there's a yellow line it's not in the right direction and then rather than having people watching why don't we make this the mountains so i'm going to select that and i'm going to select all this and i'm going to say generative fill rocky mountains let's see what that does this could be interesting man it's nuts out uh -uh -uh. look mountains <laughs> that's pretty cool that's more like the foothills there we go there's there's your red tractor in front of the mountains so if you haven't played with generative fill that's generative fill so you can absolutely take other images and modify them um you can also if you want to get geeky you can do use something in um what's it called stable diffusion called control net which which also does this hey emilio's wife what's happening welcome 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 lawyers ruin all the fun i know right I asked ChatGPT to create a nuclear we weapon, so it helped me. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're trying to figure out those safety boundaries for sure. Um, how do you access ChatGPT4? When I see, when I use chat on Bing, it's not even close to ChatGPT, not 4. It actually is 4, Catherine. Um, unfortunately, it just sucks. They, they kind of lobotomized ChatGPT at Bing. So this, if I do a new topic, this screen, if you click the chat screen on Microsoft Bing, and it brings you to this more creative, more balanced, more precise, um, this is GPT-4. I would say flip it to more creative. That's the kind of the closest thing, but this is built on top of GPT-4. It's just that they've put, oh my God, if, if I just wash away, you'll know what's happening. This is nuts. Um, crazy. Um, this is GPT-4, but um, they had some issues with the New York Times, uh, with a New York Times reporter um, who essentially got stalked by GPT-4. So they kind of lobotomized it. It is not nearly as good. Um, so the other ways to access ChatGPT-4, I have up on this thing. So you can pay for GPT Plus at OpenAI.com. So that's GPT. That gives you access to GPT-4. You can also pay for access to Poe.com, which will give you access to GPT-4. It'll also give you access to a, a bunch of other models. I, I None of them are as good as GPT-4, in my opinion. So I currently pay for this one and this one. Um, by the way, I'm not getting paid for any of this. So I don't give a shit if you go pay for these or not. Um, but let me, let me show you this. So if you're at um, chat.openai.com, and you pay for the subscription, you get ChatGPT Plus, so you get 3.5, and then you get GPT-4. And GPT-4 is, hands down, the best thing out there until I find something better. Just, it's better. And then they, they used to have it connected to the internet, but they killed that yesterday because it was uh, pulling content from behind paywalls, apparently, which, which the uh, publishers weren't enjoying. And then... Um, it also gives you access to plugins, and the plugins are also connected to the internet, so it's it's pretty powerful. Um, is it worth paying for now that it's not connected to the internet? I think so. I, the internet stuff will come back. They'll fix that. 
that's just a little blip in the radar, as they say in the tech development business. I mean, one of the things to realize is that we are very, 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 very early in all this generative AI nonsense. So these tools are, are quite raw. Um, I'm sorry if this is weird to ask, but why does AI have so much trouble, trouble with genitalia? Um, probably because they've got some safety... Um, some safety guardrails in there. Um, if you want to go sort of deep in the in in the darker world like that, I would definitely just go to Reddit, find the subreddits for stable diffusion, and I'm sure there's some specific subreddits. I think it's going to start hailing soon. And by the way, if I just disappear, it's because lightning bl blasted my electricity. So. Good, goodbye in advance of that. Um, dang, it's coming. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, the, the genitalia stuff. So if you want to explore that stuff, um, stable diffusion, so Stability AI open sourced all of the stable diffusion models and the developer community, there's all sorts of um, um, tools and you know custom models and things like that in the in the stable diffusion world so i just go to reddit go to the stable diffusion subreddit and then go find some posts where people are doing adult content because I'm, I'm sure there's stuff there because it's all open source so the the safety guardrails aren't there what i don't know is what it's been trained on but you can get your own what they're called what are called checkpoints so i'm sure people have uploaded checkpoints for adult content and in that case probably does genitals better but it's kind of I, I assume it's similar to, you know, for a while these models would, would produce hands with like, you know, 10 fingers on them. Like, they were just crazy pretzel fingers. Um, and that's gotten better. So I would imagine you can find some checkpoints for the, for the adult stuff. I tricked him. Ba -dum -bum. Can you use auto? Oh, no. TikTok just did its thing and jumped me to the bottom when I was in the middle of answering a question. <laughs> I just saw a can you ask for the basics of Zapier? Yes, I'll show you that in a second here. Um, can you see audiopen.ai? I don't know what it is. Um, hopefully it's not something that's going to install a virus on my machine. Don't, don't do that to me. Audiopen.ai. I get viruses, so you don't have to. Transform messy thoughts into clear text. Just hit record and start talking. Audio pen will clear it up when you're done. That's slick. I mean, that looks like a relatively simple tool sitting on top of, you know, the, the GPT um, backend, the GPT large language model. That's a pretty slick use case. Um, right now, any tools like that, I'm not spending much time on because things are changing too fast. What was the prompt link again? Prompts.chat. Prompts.chat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Disinformation seriously is a giant headache. It's going to get way, way worse. Blue cat, blue cat, blue cat sushi. Your name is a tongue twister. This dude is way too old for new tech. Dude, that's just mean. I'm not old. I am experienced and wise. I'm, I'm wizened. I am a wizened person. My org is allowing Copilot, but that's it. Seems that GitHub, Microsoft have figured out the SL, SLOM stuff, security something, something and something. I don't know what SLOM is, but that's cool. Yeah, I listen, I, Microsoft is going to make this shit safe for, for all companies. Um, someone says they love me. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. What do I think the best video to text? Wait, video plus text to speech is video plus text to speech. I don't know. They're, they're, they're all okay. D dash ID is pretty good. If you're talking about simulating video and, and doing text to speech, 11 labs probably has the best audio and you can make a model of your own voice. Um, it's still a little 
a little stilted and crappy. They're all a little stilted and crappy still, so I don't think any of them are great. Some of the music ones where they're taking an existing song and then and then resampling someone else's another artist's voice on top of it, those are pretty good, but you're starting with a with a bass bass voice. Um I haven't dug deep into that world and I should because I have a video company. Um tractor racing is a thing. It is. In in the part of Pennsylvania I grew up in, it's a big thing. Saturday, 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 come to the book tractor pools. Come on down. See the biggest tractors. This Saturday, see a jet engine strapped to a tractor. <laughs> yeah. Turn off auto macro mode. Wait, turn off auto macro mode in your iPhone camera settings. Oh, for the focus thing? Turn off auto macro mode. Okay, wait, let me I'm gonna write that down. Ding, 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 because I won't do it now. Auto macro mode off. Thank you. Beautiful. Appreciate that. Um, it won't try to use your wife for macro shots. That's great. All right. Did you see the jetpack racing event happening? You mean the one where the guy fell <laughs> fell from like 20 feet above the track and like rolled down the track yeah i saw that that was pretty funny at the f1 race yeah that was pretty good <laughs> uh if you don't want the autofocus issue yeah I, I would like for it not to screw up like that um they have so much auto they have so much generative design stuff happening thanks for the welcome kyle you're welcome thank you for the thank you for the welcome <laughs> is it a gully washer in denver oh yeah it's yeah there's oh shit <laughs> fuck our trash can's out our trash can washed down the street oh, i gotta go deal with that all right i'll be back uh talk fuck our trash can washed down the street oh shit Gully washer. I'm like, yep. And I'm like, oh, there's my garbage can. Oh! So not the garbage can. Well, it did. I put it back in. Oh. All right. Oh, shit. Damn. I'm winded. Oh my God. Yeah, it's bad. 
All right, not only was it gully washer, it was, I almost got swept away, but it's slowing down now. Woo, all right. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. I wouldn't have seen my garbage can floating down the street. All right, it's bad at hands and ears too. Yeah, it's getting better at hands and ears, but still bad at genitals, apparently. Um, all right, someone wanted to see Zapier, so I'll show that. Let me go back and see if I can find that comment. Autofocus lens. Mm -mm -mm. Some, some comments have been filtered to protect the community's experience. Don't be nasty to each other. Don't say bad things in my comments. We don't think we don't smile kindly on that here. Um, what's your opinion? What do you recommend as a good start to the plugins for generating mid-journey prints? I think some of the um, the bots at Poe are actually pretty good. I haven't played with any of the plugins yet, but I'm sure they're I'm sure they're fine. But what's nice about the bots on Poe is there's a bunch of them. Let me see. Let me go show you that. Uh, 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 where's my Poe thing? I don't know. Just make a new one. Poe. So if you go to Poe, so Poe's just like ChatGPT, but the thing you have about Poe, you've got a bunch of different um, models here. You've got Sage, which is theirs. You have three subscription-only ones, GPT-4, Claude Plus, which is Anthropic's GPT-4, and then Claude Instant 100K. So this is a 100,000 token model that you can play with, which basically translates to you can type in 75,000 words into your prompt. So basically you could paste an entire novel into your prompt and start interacting with it. And then you have all these, um, all these bots. And so up here, if you go to the explore button, it takes you and there's just all different categories of bots. And these are all just little pre-prompted, you know, chat GPT like things. So the mid-journey one, you can just type in um, uh, rainstorm gully washer um, um, washing, uh, let's see, washing garbage cans down the street so pretty crappy prompt and then it will rewrite it color photo of a rainstorm gully washer watching garbage cans down the street strong wind lightning strikes intense rain pouring down chaos and disorder canon eos mark three ilford delta 3200 fast shutter speed michael bay genesis right so it puts in a bunch of stuff so i can now just copy this Hop over to Discord and slash imagine and pop it on in there and just let it do its thing. So I like those. Hello, Baffency. Age is a number. The mindset is what rules how you see, especially in learning. Congrats. Thank you. I am young in the learning, old in the hairline. <laughs> and the chins and the and and the eyesight and the occasional brain malfunction um what's that do oh that's making my gully washers we'll see we'll watch this one for a bit these these could be interesting this will give you a sense also of how good um what's it called mid journey is Mid Journey 5.2 is quite, quite good. These look like they're going to be pretty. They're going to be well composed. All right, they're at 93%. I'm liking this one. Although that one looks like it's got more chaos in it. All right, things are calming down out there. I was like up to my calves in water, my feet are soaked. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's pretty good. That's pretty nasty. 
Yeah, these are all like post gully washer. It's like all the aftermath of the gully washer. Anyway, that's that. Um, okay, so let me let me show you Zapier pretty qu pretty quick. The thing I'll tell you about Zapier is it's it's all of these no code tools. While they claim to be no code, you don't have to actually write code, but they all have their um, their quirks, and and they're not necessarily simple. So the most important thing you can do is just kind of get your head around the 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 basic um, way they work. So when you get to Zapier, like once you're once you're signed in and everything, you have a dashboard which is 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 that what I'm on right now? Yeah, no. Yeah, so there's a, the dashboard. One of the things they've got is they've got a new AI generated. You can describe what you want your Zap to do, and it'll, it'll automatically assemble things for you. I find that I find it a little confusing because it will it it will sometimes assemble things in a way that wasn't really what I was trying to accomplish. So it can take longer to kind of unravel one of these than it can to just write your own. Um, but know that that's there. There's also a plugin for ChatGPT that does the same thing, and I haven't played a ton with that. Um, but they have these things called Zaps, and that's why it's called Zapier, even though they spell it Zapier, which drives me fucking crazy. Um, and so over here are my Zaps. So I've got a bunch. I've got one here for the challenge engine. I've got an employment skills one. I've got one for um, tweets for everyday AI. I've got one that we use internally at Storyvine. So I got a bunch of them. Um, I did an example one the other day that's really simple. Okay. So I'm going to go into the Zap now. So so now that we're in Zapier, think of think of Zapier as like um, like Lego blocks for interactions with different tools, and and there's basically three kinds. Of interactions there, there's more than that but you know ostensibly it's three there's an input that what they call a trigger so something starts your zap and in this case I'm using a new response in a Google form so somebody I create a Google form somebody inputs something in that Google form I then take what they put in that Google form send that to OpenAI using the OpenAI Lego block and then put that in a Gmail to send it and so that's how it does it. Now, each one of these, there's a bunch of steps within it. This is sort of the quirky part where there's, you say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a new form response, you know, from this thing. I'm going to connect my account to it. Um, the trigger is going to be, I pick this specific form and then um, I'm going to put some test data in there, you know, from, from that form. And then from that, that's how I'm going to, you know, send data to the open AI thing. And then the open AI thing is a similar sort of thing. You pick an action from open AI, you can create an image, you can check moderation to see if someone's swearing, you can send a prompt. So that's what I'm doing in this case. So we're gonna send a prompt to this account. Um, and then here's the actual prompt. So I'm using the DaVinci 003 model. So I was over in playground and I, I, I got my prompt figured out over there. And then you'll notice in my prompt, there's a variable here that comes from that form. So somebody inputs a color in a form. I stick that in the prompt that gets sent to OpenAI. OpenAI then sends me back. In this case, it's a poem about a color, right? A poem about a, a colored animal and whatever the color was, it writes that poem. So that, that comes back. And then from there, I'm taking that poem and I'm popping it in a Gmail where the content of the Gmail is, hey there, so-and-so, you asked for a poem about this color, animal, here it is. And then there's the, the response. And then that gets emailed to someone. So, so this is kind of a, a, super simple, a super simple version of, um, of, of Zapier, of, of an automation. Somebody puts something in a form, I send that to OpenAI to have a poem written. I email that poem to someone. So that's kind of it. That's probably a whole, like I spent an hour with um, a bunch of, 
you know, professionals um, just getting this thing set up with them. So it can, it can get pretty geeky there. So I'm, I'm happy to dig deeper on it, but that's, that's the basics of Zapier and how you do those automations. So, all right. My heart rate's start, starting to come down from the, from the garbage can rescue. <laughs> My company won't hire... Okay, we're, we're not going to talk about that stuff in here. Um, did AI have a memory to save all the previous matters? No. So with, within a conversation, within a chat, it has some memory within the chat. So if you say, write me a poem, and then you just say, make it longer, it knows what it is, right? It's got, it's got memory within that chat itself, but it's not remembering things across chats. Um, you can create that and that will be coming, but it's not here right now. So there, if you want to play with that, if you're geeky and you want to explore that, look up a project called Langchain where you can embed your own data. And once, once your data is embedded, you put it in what's called a vector database and it basically makes it gpt -able. So using that architecture you can create a memory so you could you could make your own but you got to be pretty geeky so if you want to get geeky go play with that if you don't just wait for six or eight months and google's going to have this dropbox just announced it microsoft is going to have this everybody's going to allow you to dump shit into directories and then search on them so memory is right right around the corner from that and open ai is going to do everyone's going to do this it's just we're very early in this process right now so a lot of the tools don't do what instinctively we think they should because once you start playing with this you're like well it should remember who i am and what i talked about before it just doesn't um that doesn't do anything from my experience it just takes away the option i don't know what that was in reference to but i don't doubt that it's making videos now so the videos that mid journey is making is just a video of the um, the animation when it goes from completely blurry to a realized image. So it's just, it's just an animation of it, um, you know, going from nothing to something. Um, I have seen people use that to make interesting animations and sort of take those videos and stitch them together, but it's not doing like runway MLs, Gen 1 or Gen 2. Um, weather delay, ground crews cover the mound. <laughs> exactly. We definitely had a weather delay. Um, it was intermission time, although I just started. But it stopped now. It's all, it's all calmed down. It's almost like it's normal again. Um, one street in Denver gets saved from the swim away trash can. <laughs> one, one got saved. It was, it was close because it, it was the other two were like, they were laying on their backs with all the garbage out, and I was, like, stuffing the garbage back in, and the water was taking them away. It was, it was dramatic. It was high drama out there on the street. <laughs> Explain transformer-based learning. How do you optimize, optimize cost function in transformer-based learning? I don't know enough about the technical stuff, and I certainly don't know enough about cost op optimization uh, in that stuff, so I'm not even going to attempt it. Um, that That's so... so where where I focus in this channel is is sort of the inflection point after Chat GPT. So so think regular entrepreneurs, regular businesses using Chat GPT rather than developing the models themselves and, and doing the kind of transformer based learning that you're talking about. Um, I would just sort of you know point you to GitHub and Reddit and go find some communities. Like I'd go get involved in um, uh, what I, what I just what I, what I just mentioned with um, uh, there's 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 the autonomous agents auto GPT baby AGI uh, and then um, the one I just mentioned that I can't remember my brain just shut down da 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 all right let me see what else is here 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 I got the dual screen back I did nostalgia I got it back. What's the Discord again? What's the Discord again? Okay, so if if you if you want to play with uh, Midjourney, you just go to midjourney.com and that'll point you to the Midjourney display community of like curious AI people. So if you go to the salon.ai 
Um, that'll take you to our meetup. Our next meeting is tomorrow night, actually, uh, from 5 to 7 Mountain Time. And we're, we're doing AI confessionals. So anyone who's had any experience with AI is just going to be talking about it. So those are always fun. Um, and then we have a Discord server where you can play with MidJourney, but you can also ask questions and join the community. And then we have a LinkedIn group as well. So that's all, that's all there. And then the other thing that I'll, I'll put a request out for. So a couple of nights ago, people were asking about, you know, have I done a workshop that people, you know, said, you know, it would be valuable for them if I put together a workshop. So I haven't put together a workshop, but I have put together a workshop graphic uh, and I have put together a survey. So if you go to Linktree, Linktree, that shitty way they spell Linktree slash real Kyle Shannon, the first link there is to a Google form that's a survey about doing a workshop. So it's just three questions. So if you'd be interested in doing a workshop, go there and just answer some of those questions about what would be valuable in it. And then I'll think about putting together a workshop um, that, that sort of meets, meets the most people's needs for, for what they're trying to accomplish. So... If you would go do that, I would appreciate it. And then also, um, what else? If you're new here, welcome. This is the AI Learning Lab. My name is Kyle Shannon. I'm an entrepreneur. And um, hang on, let me move this on screen a little bit. These URLs that I have up all the time, um, if you haven't played with ChatGPT, that top URL is the official ChatGPT website. Just go there. Go there right now while I ramble and start talking. Bing and Poe are also places where you can play with chat GPT or variations of it. And then um, prompts.chat will teach you, it's like a primer on prompting. So how do you actually talk to these things and get them to do useful stuff? And then Futurepedia is a uh, directory of AI um, applications and services and things like that. Most of them are crap, but you know. Sorry, is Poe using GPT-4? You can, you can use GPT-4 on Poe, but no, Poe is using their own trained model. They trained it on Quora data. That's Sage. Then you can, for free, you can play with Claude Instant, which is Anthropic's version of GPT-3.5. You can play with GPT-3.5. And then if you pay at Poe.com, you get access to GPT-4, Claude Plus, and gpt or, or Claude Instant 100,000. So there's three different models you can play with if you pay for it that are kind of more elevated models. Um, -bum 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 -bum, the occasional brain being overworked. Yes. What are you recording with? Love the rectangle portrait. This is just, it's a dual camera option. When you go live, it just says dual. And if you click that, um, it does this. But... I had this for like a month and then they took it away from me because I guess I was a bad, bad boy. <laughs> and, and now I, 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 I must have earned the TikTok God's respect and it's back. Although yesterday I was like doing something, trying to move it around and it just disappeared on me. And then I brought someone up on stage and then it brought it back. So I don't know. It's just TikTok's just a janky piece of shit software. It streamlines automation between multiple systems. Not sure what that's in reference to. He likes hearts. Oh, yeah. Feel free to heart the screen just because it lets people know we're here. It, it lets people, more people know to come in and come hang out and talk about storms and asparagus and hairlines and <laughs> bee celebrities and occasionally AI. What are some of the best plugins you've seen that I'd recommend to your audience? Um... Most of the plugins are just crap right now. Here's here's my philosophy on the plugins. If you want to know what I think of the plugins, they're a big pile of steaming shit. But <laughs> um, I don't know why I just went to New Jersey there. I was I was some uh, crab fisherman from New Jersey. Yeah, the crabs ain't running like they used to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you get out there, you run the fucking lines, you work your fucking ass off, and then you get in here and they give you this, huh? They ask you about plugins. This is what we're doing now? Um, here's my thought on plugins. When the, when the iPhone first came out, they had this idea of the App Store, but they didn't call it the App Store, and they weren't apps. <laughs> so, so when you ran the, the, the original iPhone, there were like, I don't know, 60 of them. 
and they were called widgets and they were really just hyperlinks to websites so it was basically just a little web browser in your phone and they weren't really applications and everyone kind of lost their mind like ah, oh, these are crap and it's awful and blah, 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 blah. and then that became the the app store right and became very sophisticated and you can do real real apps and it became a whole economy in and of itself um that's where plugins are right now they're, they're kind of janky little things um, I'll go over and show you some of the ones that I've used that I think are useful. There's there's some in there that are useful. That, so I'm happy to show you the ones uh, that that I think are useful so far. The caveat is I um, I have not <laughs> gone through all 600 plus of them. They keep adding to them, and so I haven't done it. So let me let me show you how you, how you get to them in the first place. So if you if you haven't been to ChatGPT, this is your chat history over here. And then in order to get plugins, you have to be part of ChatGPT+. You also have to enable the beta features. So let me show you how to do that. If you go to GPT-4 and you don't see plugins beta, that means you haven't enabled them yet. So what you do is you come over here to your profile, you go to settings, and then in beta features, you turn on plugins. This used to say, um, browse with bing and plugins but they just disabled browse with bing because some someone did a no-no over at open ai somebody got in trouble so they had to delete it so it'll be back okay so now that we're in plugins how you use the plugins is you have this this long list these are the ones of plugins i've got installed and then in any given chat session, you can enable up to three of them. So generally what you're doing is you're enabling three kind of like, like-minded like plugins, like maybe it's three travel plugins or three fo uh, food-related plugins or research-related plugins. Um, you're, you're effectively making like an application using up to three plugins. Then if you want to go get more, if you want to go see what's available, you go to the plugin store which, you know, again, back to that app store metaphor, it's like the, the app store. And if we go to all here, let's see how many, there's 155 times four, so 620 plugins, indoor plants, tic-tac-toe, job search. So a bunch of them are just crap, but if you look for like brand, let me look up brand. So here's one called brand fetch that I've used before, which is, Brand fetch is kind of interesting. It'll go get you like the the hex colors and the logos for, you know, a company. Um, so anyway, so so you that's how you find them. You just kind of dig through there and find them. There is a plugin called <laughs> Pluginpedia where you can search for plugins using ChatGPT. So that you know, I've used it once. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not really digging deep. Um, Let's see. Okay, so so one plugin that I think is is worth it is WebPilot, and what WebPilot does is it lets you take a URL of. Let me go get a site here somewhere. Let me just go get um, Moloch uh, Secret Cyborgs. All right. So here is. Here's an article. I think it's a Medium article. Is it Medium? No, it's one useful thing. It's his own thing. So here's an article uh, from a guy named Ethan Mollett called Detecting the Secret Cyborgs. This is a really interesting article if you, if you haven't read it. But anyway, let's say that I've got ADD and I don't like to read articles. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Okay. Um, please summarize that URL in short bullet points um, for someone with ADHD who hates long articles. I didn't need to give it all that extra context, but whatever. So it's now going to go read that URL. It's going to go read that article and it's going to give me my bullet points, right? So, so that's, there, there's plugins that read PDFs. WebPilot will do PDFs and websites. Um, so here's a summarized version. Large language uh, models are a breakthrough. Billions of people have access to them. 
Many companies have banned ChatGPT, so people within those companies are using these things for personal productivity, but they're not, right? So, so it gives me my, my uh, bulleted list of what that article is about. So that's that one. Um, there's another plugin here called um, Prompt Perfect, which is fun, where if you type the word perfect in front of your prompt, perfect, um, right? a poem about a gully washing rainstorm and because i put the word perfect in front of it it's going to fire off the prompt perfect um, plug-in and it's going to rewrite my prompt and so we can actually go look at what it did so I put in this crappy little thing and then it said, compose a highly descriptive and intricate poem that vividly captures the essence and intensity of a torrential rainstorm that engulfs a gully, right? And then it writes a better poem because it wrote a better prompt. So that one starts to look like, that. that's what the future of prompting looks like, where you're not going to have to be a prompt engineer because the, the tools themselves are going to help. Um, there's another one that, that someone in here told me about called Stories, which is kind of fun. There's Stories that will write a children's book. So um, write a children's book about a garbage can that got washed away during a big rainstorm and the little boy who went searching for it and then that should fire off the stories plug-in and what that will do is it's actually tied to a completely different website that will write that children's story and then illustrate all the all the um, images for it and so, so that so now it just gives me the link to the um, to the uh, the adventures of Sammy the Searching Boy gives me the link to the to the book, and then there's a little boy in the rain, quiet, peaceful neighborhood. There's his little garbage can. How cute is that? Cute little garbage can, and then you flip pages. Right, so it just wrote, there's the big storm, we're generating your image, and then do I like this story? I can actually order that book for 26 bucks. So, you know, that plugin is actually not all that sophisticated, right? It's basically taking a prompt and sending it to a website. The website is sophisticated. There's another one that, this is one of the ones that they've used in some of their examples. Um, that we've all heard of and probably used called Instacart, right? So I can now say, make me a meal plan um, for um, a very rainy week. And so now it's just going to make me a meal plan, we hope. Warm oatmeal and berries, tomato soup with a grilled cheese sandwich. That's actually really good. Chicken pot pie. This, this all this does sound good. Baked lasagna and a side salad. I'm in. This is my rainy weather. Beef stew with mashed potatoes. Okay, I'm in. I like it. Um, would you like me to generate a shopping list for these meals using the Instacart plugin? So all I have to say is yes. And now it's going to fire off that plugin. It's going to basically generate i guess recipes or an ingredients list from all the stuff i need to make all that crap and and if i were spending more time on this i would have it go give me specific recipes for those you know i'd say i don't like this one i do like that one give me a recipe for that you know how are you making spaghetti bolognese oh i you know i want to make fresh sauce not out of a jar and then here's your instacart shopping list so now it fires us off to Instacart. And <clears throat> boom, I could have those groceries sitting on my porch within an hour. I mean, 
holy crap, right? So now, is this all... Um, so what I showed there are decently slick, but they're, they're, what they're technically doing is actually quite simple. Here's how I sort of play this thing out moving forward. Right now, everything with these AI tools, like they're, they're, they're all, you have to like 3,700 AI tools, right? They're all these distinct individual tools. And, and like you have to go figure them out. And is this one good? And is that one good? And should I pay the subscription here? Should I? Oh, I don't know how to. Like it's all totally confusing right now. But what the what the plugins point to for me is an agent that I can just tell it what I want, and it'll fucking go figure that shit out, right? So I can just say to my agent, "Hey, it's raining out." Um, and, and, you know, my, my little niece is really scared. Can we write her a story? Sure, let me go write you that story. You know, I'll, I'll send it to you when it's done. You know, do you want me to email that to you or do you want me to send it to your, you know, Apple iBooks? <laughs> Put it in my iBooks. Great. Um, oh, and by the way, you know, it looks like it's going to be cold and rainy all week. All week. Can, can you make me a meal plan and then go ahead and have those groceries delivered? And it'll just go figure that out. So, so these agents... Um, are going to be multimodal. They'll create images, music, words, designs, animations, everything. Um, and they're going to be, um, you're, you're going to give them access to a lot of your world, right? So it'll say, hey, in order for me to buy groceries with Instacart, we have to connect it to your bank account. So hook those up. And so you'll start to hook all that shit up. I think Apple's going to be really good at this because they're really good with the privacy stuff. They're really good with interface. And they're really good at burying high technology behind simple interface. Um, so um, I would encourage you to go play with the plugins, but just, you know, set your expectations low that you might not, they, they might not be as exciting as, as they seem, um, but they're, they're, they're exciting in their potential. Sam Altman from OpenAI talks about the fact that plugins have not found their product market fit yet which is silicon valley speak for ain't no one using this shit <laughs> well you know why they're not using it sam because it sucks and you have the interface buried behind 16 levels of clicks um but so at some point someone will figure that shit out how long have i been using these products well these products have only existed for six months so november 30th 2022 is when chat gpt came out I was using the OpenAI's Playground before that, so we've, we've incorporated some, some of the OpenAI stuff into my company's uh, video platform, um, and I was doing some of the in image generation stuff, you know, in, in the kind of year before ChatGPT came out. Uh, but when ChatGPT came out, for me, here, here's the metaphor that, that it, it struck for me. So in, in the, in the mid-90s, I stumbled upon this thing called the World Wide Web, and the internet had been around for decades, but you had to use command line stuff, and it was mostly scientists and researchers and universities that used it, and it, it was very, very technical, and you had to be very technical to use it. And then Tim Berners-Lee invents this thing called the World Wide Web, and all of a sudden you can, with a few little tags that you know don't require a computer science degree, you can make this thing called a page with hyperlinks on it where you can click on these words and it takes you to other pages. And... When I, when I first saw that, I just had this epiphany that, oh, this, this could be really powerful. And, and I, I published an online magazine, an art and culture magazine. And three weeks after I uploaded the first issue, there was a full page article written about it in Paris. I was living in Brooklyn. Three weeks later, a Parisian no newspaper wrote about my online magazine. And I was like, holy shit, the world just changed. ChatGPT is the equivalent of that for AI, where AI has been around for decades Machine learning was getting better and better, but it was very much used in specialized little corners, medical stuff, radiology reports, you know, high research, Watson Health, you know, the, the you know, first chess and then go and things like that. In 2017, Google invents this thing called the transformer. And what that allowed is for these machine learning models to be trained on massive data sets. And so companies like OpenAI saw that and said, wait a minute. 
the, the biggest data set out there is all of the internet. So what if we take identifying data sources really seriously, use this transformer thing, and then start throwing as many GPU cycles as we can and, and go build ourselves some models. So they did GPT-1 and GPT-2 and GPT-3. And then GPT-3 all of a sudden started doing things that were pretty remarkable. And then it was a very short, it was kind of a year and a half leading up to um, chat GPT. And so chat GPT is this thing that makes the power of machine learning available to the rest of us. Interesting stat, the World Wide Web to get from zero to 100 million users was six years. Chat GPT from zero to 100 million users, six weeks. Six fucking weeks. Fastest adoption of technology in history. So all of the stuff that you've been hearing about for the past six months where it seems like AI just happened, AI didn't just happen, but what happened is the, the equivalent of the World Wide Web was invented and slapped on top of the, the core large language models that sit underneath it. And that's why this is also exciting because we mere more fucking magic. If you haven't used them, if you haven't had your Kevin McAllister moment, this moment, <laughs> you need to play with them until you have your home alone moment. Oh my God, it can do that. I had no idea. And then dig deeper and then dig deeper and then have it do something that is something that you do for money. And then when you get really nervous and scared, then, then now you're ready. Now you're ready to start playing. That's why this channel's here. Um, so, so I haven't been using this stuff this long, but that's okay. No one has. Um, there's, you know, data scientists who've been developing these things for a long time. But nobody knows how to use this generative AI stuff right now. Nobody. And it's evolving all the time. In fact, <laughs> yesterday, um, ChatGPT was connected to the Internet. And today it's not. <laughs> because apparently it was sucking some um, content out of uh, paywalled uh, places that <laughs> you're supposed to pay for uh, the content. And it was sucking some of that stuff out of there. So they, they took it down. They'll fix it. All right. Um, what are the tools I should use to make a complaint against a professional? If you put in, you know, the elements of, you know, tell ChatGPT to act like, you know, a lawyer that's going to help you um, put together a complaint document. Um, if you go to prompts.chat, that'll, that'll give you some education around why telling ChatGPT to act like a lawyer actually works. It actually does, believe it or not. It seems counterintuitive. You, the more context that you give these tools, the better they get. Unlike Google, where they, you know, Google sort of trained us for the past 20 years to make our prompts as concise as possible. These are kind of the opposite. If you give ChatGPT a boring generic prompt, it's gonna give you a boring generic answer. If you tell it you want it to act like a very specialized kind of lawyer, and then you give it the context of here's this organization and here's what they did to me, and you know, here's what I'm looking to, to get out of it, and I want you to help me write the, the first letter or the complaint, um, it'll, it'll go ahead and do that. Sorry, I have a hair in my mouth. Um, so yeah, just, just go there and start playing, but start with prompts.chat if you don't quite understand, you know, if you haven't really talked with one of these things before, go play with that. It'll help a lot. Happy fourth. Happy fourth to you. Uh, -ba 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 -ba. What do I think of retrieval augmented generation? Um, I don't know it. That's something that's probably come out in the past week or two. And if it hasn't, if it's on the machine learning uh, engineering side of the house, I'm not. It's probably above my pay grade. Retrieval. Augmented generation. Is this the one where it looks at the shit that it made and and natural language process that combines two steps, retrieval and generation. The idea is that the first relevant documents based on a given query and then the information generates a response. Oh yeah. So um I don't I don't know anything about it, but but that idea of um that idea of getting some some trusted source and then doing 
generation based on that I think makes perfect sense the the other way of you know generate the response and then actually go look at the response and see if it makes sense and is it accurate and and did I hallucinate um, I think this stuff's going to be really important so um, I don't know enough about that to comment on it other than conceptually I think it's very smart um, boom 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 lots of boom booms first the storm now the boom booms all right. I lost my place. Okay, there we are. Whoa, the echo, echo, echo. Oh, sorry. Um, I think it is overhyped. Machine learning model existing for so long but still don't have full self-driving. Well, Gumba, I, I mean, listen. There, there are certain... M machine learning has been around for decades. Elon Musk overpromised full, full self-driving. So did George Hotz with Comma. Um, everyone was overly optimistic about that shit. Um, it's not there yet. It's getting closer. Um, we'll get there with it. What's what's potentially underhyped is this generative AI stuff. It's not the sort of big industrial um, scale. Um, applications. Those are going to take however long they're going to take. If we're talking about curing cancer, having it fly airplanes, having it drive cars, where people's lives are at risk, that's going to take a long time and it should fucking take a long time. What's different with ChatGPT, what changed with ChatGPT is, is there's, there's an inflection point in history where prior to that inflection point, this was really for the machine scientists and the engineers. After that inflection point, it's the rest of us that get access to these tools. So every single knowledge worker is now at risk for being disrupted. Every single person in the creative community, in any kind of creative, is at risk of being disrupted. It's going to fundamentally transform the nature of work and how we define work and what we call work. So I think, and why I'm spending fucking two to three hours a night on this TikTok channel and the rest of my waking day learning everything I can about this is that I think this is significantly more profound than, say, the World Wide Web or the invention of the PC. It, it, it's in the neighborhood of, like, steam engine level important, right? Industrial revolution came out of that. Like, it's in that neighborhood. It's in printing press, written language, scale innovations in my opinion um, so I think it is potentially underhyped um, but <laughs> I could be wrong and just blowing three hours a night talking about it but I've you know having been here before with the World Wide Web um, I've never seen anything move this fast and it is so significantly profound like the amount of fucking mind-blowing I mean, have you had it write you a an application in the 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 you know programming language of your choice? I don't know. I could be wrong. It's okay to disagree, but I don't want to see AI replacing human jobs. It's going to. Or it is another assistance tool. It's more than an assistance tool. It's listen, it is it is an assistant, it is a co pilot. But the the, the fact that I can do world-class illustrations or world-class photography without having to hire an illustrator or a photographer is fundamentally game-changing. When Code Interpreter comes out for ChatGPT, the fact that I can do, with no understanding of data analytics, I can do full-on data analysis with a prompt changes the game. Like, everything changes. Um, it is going to replace jobs. It's already replacing jobs. It's going to fundamentally alter, like the, the, the industry that I probably know the best is the advertising industry. How, how is an advertising company that charges time and materials, they charge an hourly rate for a pen full of 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 junior copywriters to crank out social media content, how can they justify that when the clients start to understand, wait a minute, couldn't you just knock this out in a couple of days or a week? Why is this taking you a month to turn around? And why are you charging me $250,000 for 60 people to do this? Couldn't you do that with 10 people in a week? 
You can't? Because I just talked to someone who said they can. Or I just talked to someone who actually delivered that for me. So you're going to need to figure that out. Like, that's coming. And that's like one example in like one corner of one industry. That's coming across everything. Um, how can I get my own AI trade Ferex trade? Uh, I don't know. Go to, go to, if you want really specific tools like for trading and things like that, I assume you mean Forex, not Ferex, but um, go to futurepedia.io, go, go in their, you know, trading and financial system. I'm sure there's a bunch of tools that specialize in it. Um, or just go to chat GPT and have it educate you on how to do that better and how to build your own bots and all that sort of shit. And it will do its thing. Um, talk about what? Hello. Hello. Pretty Oh seven. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm a secret cyborg. <laughs> Karuna. I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're like, you're, you know, doing in, in four hours, what used to t take you 40 and, and, and probably doing better work. Like I'm sure you're kicking ass. That's, that's hilarious. Um, Appreciate your feedback and actual use cases on plugins. Agreed, we're in the early stages. Agent is key, yeah. And and again, like if you're geeky, go go play with um, Auto GPT, Baby AGI, the autonomous agents that are out there. There's one called GPT Engineer. There's another one that that I played with. You, you need to know how to do Google Co or Google Colab, um, but it's called um, GPT Author, and it will write you a fantasy novel. You, you, you basically give it a topic and a writing style, and it generates cover art using stable diffusion. It writes an outline, and then it writes a chap as many chapters as you want um, until it runs out of, I think it's got a 16,000 token context window. So I think it has to, it's, it's like, it's like a 12,000 word novel it'll create, but it just creates a novel and puts it in ebook format and it opens up in iBooks. It's, it's amazing. And it's like, they didn't suck. Like the, the, the things that it wrote were not, you know, horrible. Like, is it publishable? No, but like when you sit there and watch it, you know, generate the outline and then say it's writing chapter one and it's writing chapter two and it's writing chapter three. And then it just says, here's your book. Then it takes like five minutes and $3 or something like that. It's nuts. Cause again, the thing, the thing to not do right now as lo is, is look at the imperfection of the output that you get and assume that's how it's always going to be. All of this stuff is as bad as it's ever going to be right now. It only gets better from here. So imagine, so, so a year ago, the image generation tools like Stable Diffusion and MidJourney were laughably bad. A year later, they are terrifyingly good. Right now, text to video is laughably bad. A year from now, it ain't gonna be. In fact, the 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 um, CEO of Stable Diffusion or Stability AI, the makers of Stable Diffusion, says the models that they're working with right now. So right now, when you generate an image in Stable Diffusion, you know how it takes like ten or fifteen seconds to make an image. The models that they're working with internally right now are making 60 images a second. Why is that significant? 30 frames a second is video. 60 frames a second is video game. So if you've got these tools that are generating images 60 in a second, what's it going to be a year from now? It's going to be fucking nuts. It's going to be nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Thoughts on Vizsla? I don't know it. Let me go look and see what it is. There's so many of these tools. All-in-one video storytelling. AI-powered video creation platform that enables teams. What kind of video? Because I, I have a video creation platform. Okay, so this is, so it'll write the script, let you read the script, put your stuff together. This is similar to what Storyvine does. Yeah, interesting. I'll take a look at it. How many petabytes they have analyzed? I don't know. 
Lots, lots and lots and lots, thousands and thousands of GPUs on many, many petabytes. Like, basically, the large language models that sit underneath GPT-3 and GPT-4 are, you know, like, like as much of the public internet as they could, you know, organize and tag, basically. Um, they spent years doing that, right? It was very labor-intensive and very processor-intensive. That's why... If you wonder why GPT stops at September 2021, it's because creating that base model, that, that, that mass embedding that they do of all of those data sets, like all of Wikipedia and all the blogs and all the websites and all the universities and all the research papers, all of that embedding um, is just massively time consuming and massively expensive. So they can only do that probably every couple of years. That may get faster over time. They might find new ways to do it where they can update it more regularly. Um, but that's why the base model stops at September 2021. I'm new. Can you explain the difference between Microsoft version and the OpenAI version? Yep, I'll do my best. Chat.openai.com. That's the um, official website. And GPT-4 is, in my opinion, GPT-4 at OpenAI in my opinion, is the gold standard for these um, large language models, for, for, for chat GPT-like things. It's the gold standard. It's just by far the best. Um, so when you, when you go there, you know, just the default GPT-4, um, you know, what it knows, its ability to do coding and writing and analyzing things and understanding things and mimicking things is just, you know, otherworldly. Now, Bing... If you go to Microsoft Bing, this is just a search engine just like Google, but it's kind of enabled with ChatGPT, but there's actually a chat button here. And if you click the chat button, this is GPT-4. And there's three different modes. There's creative mode, balanced mode, and precise mode. And if you play around at all with the GPT playground with, with the temperature setting, that's what they're playing with here. Right, so more creative is, is a higher temperature setting, more precise is lower. So that's probably zero or 0 0.1. Balanced is probably whatever points, you know, 0 0.7, and then this is probably closer to one. Um, this is GPT-4 connected to the internet. Now, why is it not as good as OpenAI's GPT-4? They're both GPT-4. So this gets back to that idea of there's this core large language model sitting as the foundation, and then there's the application layer sitting on top of it. So ChatGPT is, is, a, is an application that's got very specific rules and how it interacts with you and, and why it always talks to you in a certain way, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get that wrong, let me try again. All that stuff is in the application layer sitting above the large language model. So there's fine tunings and there's this application layer that you interact with. And then Bing's version of GPT-4 sitting on the same foundational model, but they have different set of rules, right? So you have two application layers sitting on top of the same base, but with different sets of rules. The reason, th this is speculation on my part, so I say this a lot, but th this may not be true, but I think this is true. <laughs> when Bing first started, it was really good. And it was like, scarily good it was kind of a wild child right it was kind of all over the place so when they first launched it a, a reporter from the new york times named named kevin roos had a four-hour conversation with bing gpt4 we didn't know it was gpt4 at the time it was just bing chat right he had a four-hour conversation with bing chat and bing chat fucking snapped and at some point he got it to tell him its name and its name was sydney and then Sydney fell in love with Kevin. And then Sydney said, Kevin, I think you should leave your wife for me. <laughs> so Kevin screenshotted that and it made the cover of the fucking New York Times, right? You can go find it. It was back in January or February. There's this screenshot of this chat interaction with Kevin Roos and Sydney. And so um, Microsoft lobotomized Sydney. So they fucking block that shit down there was a while where you could only do i think it was you could only have five back and forth interactions with bing for a while now they've opened that back up and it's getting better but that's that's the reason why they're different 
core model is the same, so the core capability is the same, but the safety restrictions and how the, the, that application layer actually works, that's what's different. Insane, man. It's just nuts. Best way to get together an AI coding team. I'm a designer with multiple billion-dollar ideas. Join the club, man. I got so many. So come back in December of last year, and if you go to that URL, it's a link tree um, to, the, to the AI salon. There's a meetup there, so sign up for the meetup. We meet every other week um, in person in Denver, but then online as well. And then we, we usually have speakers come in and talk or, or you know, we, we, you know, feature members of the community. Um, there's also a Discord that you can join. So in the Discord, that's where you can find people that are working on shit and ask them questions and do things. Um, so that's, that's a place to do it. Speaking about paywall content, content shop. Okay, I don't know what that is, but did you go see fireworks? No, it was, it, it was, it was raining so bad that I think they all got washed out. But I don't know; they're probably happening right now. I hear, I hear local ones. I've been using Bing to create historical images for my documentary. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. I'm not a fan of Bing's image generation, but if you're if if you're getting it to do historical stuff that works, great, awesome. Um, how do I save the various responses I get? Um, well, so, so in chat GPT, it's got a prompt history. So you go, you can go back to your old prompt histories. Um, you can also turn those off for safety and security for privacy and security. But if you turn them off, you lose them all. The problem with the prompt history in chat GPT is it's not searchable right now. Like why they don't put a search engine on top of that is beyond me. It's fucking insane. Um, so you, you really have to, you know, dump stuff out to copy it over to Notion or to Notes or to Google Docs or to an Excel spreadsheet um, or create an automation with something like Zapier where you kind of dial in your prompts on GPT Playground and then you create automations in Zapier and then you can just be constantly generating things automatically. Like I've created a lot of content generation tools using Zapier, um, some for my business, some for other people. Um, and that, that's a good way to do that. But, but it's, it, it's a problem. Like, it, like finding your old prompts and finding your old responses and like, I knew I did something good here somewhere and like spending an hour trying to find just the right prompt and like you knew you spent four hours just tweaking it to get it quite right and now you can't find it, that's a problem. So I'd say if you have less ADD than I do and are good at organizing shit like that, make yourself a database. Create an Airtable or Google Sheets or something like that. Uh, show a demo of Storyvine. It's not really demoable on here, but if you if you um, go to the App Store or Google Play, you can download the Storyvine app. And the way the app works is it guides an end user step by step through telling a story. So you pick different templates. So one of them is like a, a video greeting card. One of them is a video update. One is a uh, like a professional profile for LinkedIn. And you pick the template, and then you take a picture of yourself. It gives you a little dotted outline. We call him Gary the Guide. And Gary the Guide, you know, Put your head in the frame here, and then it'll prompt you what to do. So step one, take a picture. Step two, introduce yourself. Step three, answer this question. So you just answer a series of prompts. Those go up to the cloud, and then five, five minutes or so later, you'll get back an email with a fully edited video. So that's, that's how it works. And we, it's, a, it's a B2B product. It's not a consumer product right now, but it's demoable. Um, you can just download the app and play with it. Um, and then if, if it's for an organization, reach out to me and I'm happy to talk about pricing and stuff like that. But it's, it's enterprise level, um, pricing. It's not cheap. Um, very powerful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, and I just lost my place in my questions again. So I'm trying to go back and find them. I appreciate y'all hanging out on this fine, fine 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Hope you had the barbecue. The hot dogs, the corn on the cob, I had both of those, and potato salad, because it's the law. 
Let it go, let it go. <laughs> Archival footage, footage is extremely expensive. AI is brilliant. Oh, that's fucking awesome. I'm telling you, man, this shit is changing everything. Everything. Here's a documentarian who's potentially not able to make a documentary that now can, right? Amazing. It's interesting, autonomous flying is easier than autonomous driving. Yeah, because I guess you have, you have less humans involved, right? When you're up in the, in the sky, there's not as many humans involved, right? Down on the ground, you have balls rolling out and people running out and obstructions and different lighting conditions. and You don't, you don't have as much of that in the air, so I, I would assume it's simpler. But it, but it is counterintuitive that you couldn't get cars faster than you could get planes. Why are all the bigwigs freaking out about, about AI and trying to put it out of business? Because it changes everything. Um, so so I, I talked earlier about um, ad agencies, for example. One of the core... I don't, know, I don't know of a single agency holding company that their core business model is, isn't time and materials. They're all time and materials. Meaning the more people they hire and the more people they have working on the accounts to deliver the advertising and the content and whatever they're creating for their clients, the more time that is spent generating that stuff, the more money they make. So they've built these entire organizations that are designed around being as inefficient as possible, to put it kindly. That's how they make their money. So if you're ever on a call with a, with a big ad agency trying to do work on behalf of a client, there's like 15 people on the call. Two of them are talking. One of them, if you're lucky, is competent. <laughs> and they're all billing a minimum of $120 an hour. So one call, 15 people, call it 150 an hour. Do the math. And then all of a sudden along comes a technology that the client just dicking around with ChatGPT can produce the kind of work that they're seeing from an agency that maybe costs them $150,000 or $200,000. They're kind of dicking around over the weekend and generate as much stuff as was delivered in the past three months. And they like some of it even better than what the agency gave them. How long is that imbalance going to last? How long is it going to be before the client says, no, <laughs> I'm not spending that much money and you can't take six months to deliver that. I want you to be able to deliver that in two months for two thirds of the price. I understand that you're an agency and I got to pay a premium, so I'll pay two thirds of what I used to pay you, but I want it delivered three times faster at two thirds the price. And, and, Every single business out there is looking at these tools and if they're paying at all attention, if they're paying attention at all, it's very clear to them that everything's going to change. If I'm a consulting company, I mean, what do consulting companies get paid for? They get paid a lot of money to go into an organization, ask all the right questions the, the people within the company tell them those questions, then they go off for four or six months and analyze and do research and, and, and you know basically come back after four to six months and say, okay, we've figured out what your problem is. We've figured out you know, how we need to change it moving forward. Bah, 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 bah. Well, all of a sudden you've got tools that can do that, that same kind of work. And you could have a two-person shop knock a similar kind of exercise out in a week instead of six months fundamentally is going to alter thanks for the heart thank you thank you thank you every single business is going to be fundamentally altered and and some of them aren't going to make the transition some of them are going to resist it right this is what happened to kodak kodak fucking invented the digital camera they fucking invented it. And the team that invented it went to the fucking board of directors and said, 
here's the future of photography. And the board of directors said, we're humming, humming, humming. <laughs> we're in the silver halide business. We don't sell any silver halide to develop film when you just have pixels. <laughs> right? And what was it? Four years later, they went out of, they're gone, right? They're just a brand now. Google fucking invented the transformer. The thing that ChatGPT is built on was invented by Google. And Google probably recognized, oh, if we create a chat GPT-like thing, that fundamentally threatens the chat business. So let's just sit back on this and not, not really deal with it. And they didn't expect Sam Altman, you know, to do what he did. And Sam Altman didn't think chat GPT was going to do what it did, but it did. A hundred million users in six weeks. Fastest adoption of technology in history. So... Google's freaking out. Meta's freaking out. Apple's sitting there going, this is good for us because we've got the hardware to be able to run this shit locally. We're gonna, when, when Apple comes out, they're going to come out strong and secure. So they're just going to let everyone else make all the mistakes and then they'll show up with something incredible. Amazon, you know, is rolling this into all of AWS. You know, if if you want to see if you want to see a glimmer into um, some someone who's doing it right, go go do a Google search for um, "City of Boston AI Guidelines." So, "City of Boston" put out an official. It's like an eight-page document that's got you know, a set of standards and it says, here's what generative AI is good at. Here's what it's not good at. Here's some use cases for how you can use it. Here's who to go to. If you have questions, here's some resources to learn about it. Here's how, here, here are some, you know, uh, some tenants that we should follow. If we're going to do this, we should do it right. So there's the, we're starting to see glimmers of some people taking it seriously, but we're going to see, train wreck after train wreck after train wreck of companies that are like <laughs> i would never compromise my business model for this highfalutin ai thing it's just another fad <laughs> they said blockchain was going to be big right there's there's going to be a lot of that shit going there's a lot of that shit going on right now but then you look at you know the the the, the meeting in the white house 6 weeks or so ago that had the four CEOs from Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic, they're starting to take it seriously, right? So this isn't a flash in the pan. This is, this is here, and it's already changed things, but no one knows it yet. That's kind of that's, that's what happened with the World Wide Web in the mid-'90s, where it was clear to me as I looked at this technology, oh, shit, the world's just changed, but not everyone knows it yet. And it did. It changed the world. Now, in the case of the World Wide Web, it took, I don't know, I mean, you could argue it was invented in 89 or 90. It really started getting going in the mid-90s. And then by, you know, the, the dot-com bubble burst was 2000. So it took it a decade to kind of ramp up. This generative AI stuff, because it's been adopted so much more quickly and because it, it is learning on itself, like the, the innovation curve is doing this with, with the AI stuff, Within three years, I think a lot of businesses are not going to be recognizable as, as they are today. And then who's going to survive that? If they're not recognizable, how many Kodaks are there? How many businesses just go, fuck it, I'm out? Or, or worse, just go, we'll be fine and just watch their sales do this until they go to zero. I talked to, I talked to a, a CEO of a content company that... He had a product that he had 600 customers a year ago. He's got zero today. It was a self-service content creation product. In the, in the course of like nine months, he went from 600 subscribing customers to zero. And he's just flushing that product down the toilet. And he doesn't know what he's going to do for his business. Like he doesn't know what the future is for the business. It's going to be a lot of that. It's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot. If I seem passionate about this, it's because <laughs> I am. Because 
here's what, what I don't have is any answers. But what I know the answer is not is ignoring it or diminishing it or demonizing it or pretending it's not going to happen or pretending it's not profound. Because that, to me, seems unforgivable. What's forgivable is I learn about this shit, I figure it out, and then I go, I don't know what to do. Okay, none of us do. We're all trying to figure it out, right? That's totally forgivable. But if you just let it blindside you, not acceptable. There's been, there's been plenty of warning. Um, and, and worse, if you just say, well, we're fine. We're just going to do it the way we've always done it. You're not going to survive. So that's why the big wigs are freaking out. Um, if you start an agency from the 90s today with the advent of GPT, what would it look like? I, I, I can tell you right now. It's, it's got to do with 10x. It's probably 10 people. Um, the way these tools work, you can, you can do things. So, so here's how I look at it. <clears throat> ChatGPT, like being conservative, ChatGPT can write 100 times, 100x faster than I could do a first draft. It can do a first draft for me in 30 seconds, right? With three iterations. So, okay, so let's call that five minutes, right? And that first draft probably would have taken me two hours. So, so 100x just to generate something. So if I, if I want to generate something good, maybe that's a third of that time. So it's, maybe it's 30 times faster. So I can now create a good first draft 30 times faster than I could have before. So then if I say, well, clients are quirky and they take time and... If I say, okay, if I could create something good 30 times faster, I could deliver something good to a client maybe 10 times faster than I could have before. So that, so for me, there's this thing where I feel confident that I could go to any client today if I was starting an agency that was fully AI literate, like AI from the ground up. So I'm only hiring people that are like baller at this stuff. Like I've got the best image generation people and I've got what I've probably got is a bunch of Gen X people who've been in the business for 20, 30, 40 years that have their shit together and have taken the time to learn this, right? So I've put together like a dream team of like creative directors, account people, strategists, project managers, right? But it's like, it's like 10 people, right? It's not a lot, but this is full on. I could go to any client and I could say, we'll either deliver it 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper, or 10 times better, or some combination of those. And I, I was talking to someone last week, and he's got a buddy that just started a six-person agency, and they are meeting with clients in the morning and delivering a fully fleshed out concept by five o'clock in the afternoon. They're doing seven and a half hour turnarounds on fully fleshed out concepts from meeting with a client to here's your strategy, seven and a half hours. How are they doing that? Fucking all in on this. They, they know exactly what to ask the client. Again, these are people that have been in the advertising business for years. I wouldn't have junior people be a part of this. This would be all senior people. And it would be hungry. So, so I, I would have to find unicorns. I'd have to find Gen Xers or, you know, older millennials that have got some life experience and some Im ambition and are hungry enough to learn this shit. And then I would do exactly what they're doing. I would come up with some model that's like, I'll do it. I'll do it, you know, better, faster or cheaper, but like an order of magnitude 10 X. They're charging you 3 million for that. I'll deliver it for 350,000 and they're, they're taking six months. I'll deliver it in a month for 350,000. And then I would confidently know that I could actually deliver that in two weeks for 150,000. So if I did it right, I'd be more profitable. I would undercut the other agency by 10 X or in that case, eight X, but I would cut the time in a third. And I just have a dream team of 10 people all in on this shit and just fucking, I just fucking start going to knocking down one after another, after another of big accounts. 
The most exciting thing for me isn't the information aspect. It's a nat natural language interface to all software. I agree with that. What's your name? Sval. Um, yeah, it's, I saw, I saw like the ultimate extension of chat GBT was described once that, that resonated with me as the everything app, meaning it's a single interface that you just ask it to do shit and it will do it. And if it can't do it, it'll write the software for you and just go do it. So like single use software, instant APIs. If an API doesn't exist, it'll just fucking write one, go get the data, pull it back in, do what it needs to do with it. And you know, if it doesn't need to use it again, it'll throw it out. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we're not, we're plausibly within five years of being able to describe a movie that you want to see and start watching it. I want to see the Godfather using the characters of the Simpsons in the style of the abyss. And I want the soundtrack to be by Snoop Dogg and, you know, and I want it to start my favorite, these, these favorite actors and it'll just start playing. Or I want to play a video game in this genre with this game, these game mechanics, with these kind of characters, with these kind of NPCs, with three of my best friends, um, and I want to, I want to be able to play from beginning to end in less than 45 minutes and you'll just start playing that game. Like that's probably within some version of that's within five years. I mean, that's fucking insane, right? That's holodeck kind of shit. Right. And when Apple's, you know, vision plus get better and you can do all that shit within the seamless fucking thing that look like these glasses, but have all the features of that vision plus. Like that's five years out, man. Fucking nuts. So yes, I agree. Can you explain how to generate images with AI? Sure, I'll go show you. Let's go simplest first. So if you're at Bing, so if you go to Microsoft Bing, bing.com, you come to this Google looking interface. So this is the Google competitor that was laughably not Google until six months ago. And now these guys are, are yeah beyond a thorn in the side of Google. So if you click on the chat button, you come to chat GPT, right? And you can do more creative, more balanced, more precise. So you can do just normal chat GPT stuff here, like write me a poem by M in M that explains quantum mechanics. And so that'll now write my little poem, right? So that's yo, 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 listen up and the world drop, about to drop some science. Okay, whatever, it does its poem. So now I can say, um, make me an image of Schrodinger's um, cat, which is something in quantum mechanics. I'll try to create that. So. In Bing, you can just ask it now to create an image for you, and it will. And the better you get at asking for images, the better they get. So that's a way. Then we'll we'll just wait here. Bing's pretty quick. Your image is generating. I'm curious what Schrodinger's cat looks like according to Bing. And this is Dolly. The the engine sitting underneath this is OpenAI's Dolly. There's Schrodinger's cat, right? So if a cat's in a box, you know, and what is it, dead or alive, and it it's not until you look at it that we know, and it can be both at the same time. All right, so so there you go. So that's how you make images there. Now, a couple of things we could play with. Um, one is I could go to, so, so now I'm at po.com, and let's see, do we have images in here? Writing advice, AI. There's Dolly. Okay, here's a Dolly bot. Okay, so I'm at po.com, and what I did here was when you first get to po.com, you've got a bunch of different chat GPT models you can play with, but you have this explore button. And when you click the explore button, you've got all these categories. These are all bots that people have made. And so I went to the AI section, and there's a mid journey bot, and there's a Dolly bot, and there's a prompt genius bot, and there's, I'm sure there's a stable diffusion bot in here somewhere. <laughs> I don't think you can search for these yet, but here's a Dali one. So sitting underneath Bing is Dali. 
So what, let's, let me go back to Bing for a second. Uh, 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 uh. What did I say here? I said, make me an image of Schrodinger's cat, which is a really shitty prompt. But I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back to Poe. And so we're now in the Dolly bot and I'm gonna type in this shitty prompt and it's gonna rewrite it. So it says subject, Sch Schrodinger's cat, descriptions, alive, dead, quantum mechanics, uncertainty principle, environment, sealed box, radioactive decay, right? So it's getting a whole bunch of stuff here. And this is the way they wrote this bot, I assume, this is some things that Dolly understands well. So I'm gonna copy all this. I'm gonna pop back over to Bing and I'm gonna now type in, I'm not gonna type in share like and whatever the end of that thing was, but I'm gonna type in that prompt and we'll see if it gives us something that's any better. So you can use chat GPT like things to help you improve your prompting. I'm gonna show you a couple other things too. Mm -mm -mm. So there's my prompt, it says it's working on it. Oh, and there, like, okay, like, is it better? It's certainly different, right? And it's certainly, those are kind of cool. I mean, look at that thing, that's wild. That's very quantum mechanics-y and spooky, which quantum mechanics is fucking spooky, right? So look at that one. Look at the friggin' eyes on that thing. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. All right, so that's that. Now. So that's how you can do it without really thinking about it. Now, if you want to learn about it, go to this place called Open Art, openart.ai slash, slash prompt book. And you'll get to this thing called the Stable Diffusion Prompt Book. And this is for Stable Diffusion, but a lot of the concepts in here are applicable like if, if you just sort of abstract up what you're learning here all of the image generation tools have some version of this the the thing that blew my mind about this document it's a 96 page document that's essentially an art history um it's, it's like a, a little mini art history degree <clears throat> but but what you realize is that as you go through this document you realize how deep these image models are how much they understand so if i go through here it's just like a, it's like a PowerPoint presentation. Um, there's, there's kind of an intro to prompt engineering and then they talk about prompt format. So, so is it a photo or a painting? What's the subject? Do you want special lighting, environment, color scheme, point of view, background, right? So, so there's a lot of different elements of, of a vision of a visual prompt. And you're like, oh, okay. So you start just even that starting to get your head around how much these things understand is, is, is a big deal. And then they explain some more shit and then they get into modifiers and modifiers are things like it understands photography terms like different lenses or things like tilt shift or long exposure or Polaroid. Um, those will give you different examples, right? These are photographic styles, different cameras, different lenses, different lighting, art mediums, right? Do you want a chalk drawing or graffiti or watercolors or oils? Um, pencil drawings, wood, clay sculpture, right? Clay sculpture. Um, so you're like, oh, right. Like art is way more than just make a pretty picture. It could be sculptures, right? Um, it understands different artists. Here's different portrait artists, landscape artists, horror artists. When you start going down these rabbit holes, there are Google Sheets out there that have like every artist in history of note that you can put into your prompts and and dramatically modify what's coming out. Um, photographic styles, concept styles, mi mixing styles, um, you know, 3D illustrations, flat illustrations, um, just, you know, it, it just goes on and on. It's 96 pages. You can put emotions in, right? Loneliness, hopelessness, fear, aesthetics, acid wave, right? So it just goes on and on and on. So that's that. Then you get into, <laughs> it just doesn't fucking end, does it? You, you asked, and, and you asked a very, you know, sort of, can you explain how to ge generate images with AI? It's, it's too generic a question, so I have to say all this. All right, so now I'm going to go to a thing. There's a site worth getting on the wait list for called leonardo.ai. 
So Leonardo.ai is um, a web front end sitting on top of Stable Diffusion. And it's, it's a really good one. Let me make that a little smaller, make my window a little smaller so I can show you more of this. Um, it's got a community feed, a personal feed. That's my images. You can train your own images on this. So if you've got, so I'm a photographer. So if I go into the training and data sets, there's three custom models that I've created. One, one is my um, cloud photography. So I uploaded like 25 or 30 images of my cloud photography. And now I can go use that model and I can generate images that will pull in uh, that, that will generate skies that look like my skies, right? So you can do that. Um, you can, they've got a bunch of different styles that you can just pick from um, where you say, oh, I like this sort of, you know, Disney looking style. Let, let me do some children's book illustrations in that style. You can just pick these styles and start generating within them. Um, so like, here's a cool illustration style. So generate with this model. And then I can say um, uh, seamless 50s pattern of um, planes, trains, and automobiles. And I think these guys give you 150 tokens a day for free. And it's like eight, eight tokens to do a set of four images. And you can change how many images you do. But let's see if this comes up with anything interesting in that illustration style. But but um, this is really good. Now, if you're geeky, so that's kind of cool. That's what I was hoping it would give me is some sort of 50s looking wallpaper with 50s looking planes, trains, and automobiles. And it did. My kids actually had wallpaper like this when they were little babies. And it was not dissimilar to that. So like this is the kind of thing where if you dicked around with this enough, you know, you could, these are patterns you could start selling on Etsy or something like that. So that's Leonardo. Now, if you're geeky, the, the system that sits underneath this is called stable diffusion. There's, there's an extremely um, uh, extensive developer community. If you go to Reddit and go to the stable diffusion subreddit, there's all sorts of development going on with this. Um, this is a site that you don't have to be super um, super technical with. Um, so that's that one. And then the one that I think is the strongest one is Midjourney. And Midjourney, unfortunately, you have to do it within um, Discord. So you go to midjourney.com. It'll bring you to Discord. You sign up for Discord. You go to the Midjourney um, server, basically. So here's the Midjourney server. And then within a Discord server, you've got all these different channels. And then you actually make the images within this Discord channel. But you can also have conversations and there's prompt libraries in here and there's competitions and things like that. I've also got my AI salon. Within that, I've got a Midjourney channel within that. And then the way you actually make images in Midjourney is you type slash imagine. And then it asks you for a prompt. And similar to how I did that prompt for Dali, I've been, where's, oh, here it is. I've been going to Poe to the Mid Journey bot. And I type in, let's see, um, Schrodinger's cat. And then it's going to rewrite Schrodinger's cat prompt for me in Mid Journey style. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. I'm going to pop over back over to Discord. And then where I type slash imagine, I'm just going to paste in that prompt. And now it will go do its thing. <laughs> so, so there's about 30 answers to your simple question. <laughs> I hope that helped. <laughs> All right. Our enterprise architect is working on those generative tools to help our coders. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. They should be doing that. In 20 years, if the world adopts AI across industry, it will create over-dependence or it will create freedom where all of the shitty, repetitive, soul-crushing work is done by the robots and we can do the good shit. That's the other possibility. It's a very real possibility. So you can go to the dark place, but in this channel, we go to the light place.
Um, I acknowledge that that's a possible future, but I'm not committed to that. And I don't think you should be either. Look for Pixar AI on TikTok. Cool. I bet there's good stuff there. What did we learn this week? Uh, that ChatGPT connected to the internet apparently had some issues. <laughs> they had to shut that shit down. <laughs> but they're cool. Oh, you know what? You know what Mid Journey did? Rather than put Schrodinger's cat in a box, it made it like the cat was Schrodinger doing all this scientific stuff. This is cool. See, Mid Journey's just fucking cooler. I don't I'm sorry, Mid Journey's just better. It just really is. Like like this the stuff that Dali created was was visually interesting, but like this is like shit you would see in a magazine. This is cool. All right. Show a close up of the Storyvine alternative. Uh, I forget what it was called. It looks like it was a web-based thing. Storyvine's not web-based. We have an app. Is the 20 dollars a month worth it for gpt4 i think it's worth it for two reasons you get access to plugins you get access to gpt4 that's the better version of gpt4 in my opinion um and you'll get ac you'll get earlier access to code interpreter which is fucking mind-blowing um but it's 20 bucks a month for something you can ostensibly do for free at bing.com so if you got the 20 bucks, it's definitely fucking worth it. If you don't, I wouldn't stretch yourself thin for it. Because again, all this stuff is like, we're very early right now. So what you're paying for essentially is early access and convenience. I remember that story. I don't know which one I told. I do, Luke, when you give examples, actually typing in the software to show us the cool stuff, thanks. We so need search. We need chat. If anyone from OpenAI is listening, could you please make a fucking search in the prompt history? What the fuck? You put the search in the in the in the plugin store. You can search for plugins, but I can't search my prompt history. Really? Come on, dudes and dudettes, figure that shit out. <laughs> uh, Zapier is spelled Z-A-P-I-E-R. Um. If you search for ChatGPT mobile app, you can, oh, you can search in the mobile app for chat history? Vicky, you might have just changed my life. That's fucking awesome. That's a reason to actually use that app. And it used to be connected to the internet, but they shut that shit down too. <laughs> oh, someone's in trouble. Someone got in trouble. Someone got in trouble. <laughs> uh, it makes ingredients. It makes what? Integrations. Oh, yes. Weird comment, but I really like your Ray-Ban frames. Thank you. I got these at Zenny, Zenai, whatever the, the Z-named glasses place is. They're pretty good. They're a little loose and falling apart. And then I got these at a, an actual glasses store, but they're my far glasses. Those kind of look like make me look like a 60s G-Man. All right. How do I download a video from Visla on Bing? No idea. Go read their documentation. Um, enough autonomous flying. Wait, enough autonomous flying. It will get just as complex as driving. Oh, yeah. Listen, all of the all of the AI things that involve people's lives are going to take a while. Like we're not we're not going to see them move out of testing anytime soon. The FAA just approved last week the first flying car. The FAA just approved it last week. It's this cool thing that sort of like the person sits like this and the thing takes off and then the wings rotate like that. Like the, the cockpit of the person stays still. I don't, I've never seen it before, but that was approved by the FAA last week. But yeah, anything that involves people's lives is, is like creating a, a fucking social media content generator with Zapier, like, that's going to change a lot, but no one's lives are at risk. Like if it really fucks that up, does anyone really care? Well, copywriters do certainly, but, but like on a scale that's going to slow things down, that's going to keep going. But any, anything where, um, 
lives are at stake is going to take a while. Show us typeface AI. I don't know what that is. I'll go look at it. Typeface AI. Oh, is that the thing that personalized AI content for work? Yeah, it's a generative AI tool. Okay. Anything imagined. Join waitlist. Generate a blog post. So, so what this is, there's there's all sorts of tools like this. There's going to be thousands of them. If you want to see, if you want to go look at a lot of them, go to that bar. I'm sure that one's in there. Um, these are apps that are sitting on top of, you know, the GPT-4 API, right? They're pre-prompts. Someone has pre-written a prompt that says, create a blog post, create a tweet, create a this, create a that. So they've optimized your prompts. I would strongly encourage you Resist the temptation to use tools like that. If you find one that really works and you don't feel like learning this shit, more power to you. But we're early enough that it's worth your while to go to, you know, one of these three main sites and just start practicing this shit. Start understanding what they make possible and how you can get good, predictable results out of them. It will serve you. It will serve you. I promise. Um, I thought you were asking about, there's a cool feature in, I think it's in the new, uh, the, the illustrator beta where you can upload, um, a scan of a bunch of typefaces and it will figure out the typefaces for you and recommend them. That's pretty fucking cool. Also customers will respond to and not reject the AI content, which will spiral this, spiral this transition. Totally agree, me memory manager. Yeah, the like like Google when 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 ChatGPT like hit the scene and really exploded. Google's initial response was, "We're going to penalize AI generated content," and then they quickly realized that's probably not such a good idea, and they shifted their thing and they said, "We're going to penalize shitty content," but if you produce good, valuable useful content with AI, we're not going to penalize you. And that's the way it should be. Like who gives a fuck how it was written if it provides value, right? If it's good content that's engaging, then people are going to use it. And to your point, if the customers react to it, and if, if I'm a client and I spent $300,000 for an ad over here and it performed at a 1X and I spent $30,000 for an ad over here that was AI generated and it performed 2x or higher, I'm going with that all day long. Even if it was 1x and it's 10x cheaper, right? That's back to that idea of 10x. There's a, there's a, there's a you know, some significant shift in productivity up. Quality goes up. Speed to market goes up. Cost goes down. What's the implications of that? I don't know. One implication is you fire everyone and then, every, you know, it's it's dystopia. But the other one is, no, no, you you upskill those people to, to, you know, to produce more and better content for more and better clients, right? There's, there's an increase in prosperity is a possibility. But the disruption for the next two to three years is going to be very painful, I think. Add by four to six months, they are officially outdated. The model doesn't work anymore. Speed. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Oh, and by four to six months. Oh, yeah. And by four to six months, they're officially outdated. The model doesn't work anymore. Yeah, this stuff's changing fast, fast, fast. So anything you learn today, anything you build today, just know that it's probably temporary. I mean, most shit is anyway, right? The guy who invented digital photography went to Sony, right? There you go. That's really funny. Digital camera was invented in 1975. Kodak out of business, bankrupt in 2005. Yeah, but they were they were effectively out of business um, way sooner, way earlier than that. That was just the final nail in the coffin. Adobe is buying Figma, but now they got Firefly. Don't use Figma. Well, Firefly and Figma are different, and and Adobe's going to roll all this generative AI shit. Some of the some of the tools that read a website and split it into a Figma um, design library, some of those tools are pretty insane. You need more sunscreen on your face. That could just be, like, I could just have a setting here that might have this. That, some of the settings make me look totally blown out, and I don't, I'm not overly sunned. It might just be the whatever setting I have. But thank you for the 
near compliment or the uh, I'm afraid you've got skin cancer or whatever. I'm not sure quite where you're going with that. Again, a solid troll in this channel is one that I can't tell. Is it a compliment, true concern, or a troll? That's solid. It's good, solid work there. Go, Derek. Um, people have a hard time accepting that things have changed, are changed forever. Yeah, things are changed forever, but no one knows it yet. Some people know it. Some people, well, here's the thing. No one knows it. We We don't know how it's going to change and what's going to change and how deeply it's going to change and how quickly it's going to change. We don't know any of that. But the minute you get your head around what these things actually do and make possible, you're like, oh, fuck, everything's different. If you're sitting on it from the outside, it's really hard to understand that this shit's different than a Google search. It's like, it's just fancy Google. It's not fancy Google. It's not fancy Google. It's a humanity amplifier. It's a, it's a reflection of humanity that you get to tap into instantly. I mean, imagine having a tool that all of the knowledge that has been uploaded to the internet in the past 35 or 40 years is instantly available to you. And not like Google search available to you, like I want to write an application in Fortran, which nobody knows anymore, that does this, and it will fucking write it. It ain't Google. It ain't fancy Google. Faster, better, cheaper is International Harvester. I, the faster, better, better, cheaper one is that that's one I keep coming back to that like for, for years. I mean, we said this at agency.com back in the olden timey days where we'd say faster, faster, better, cheaper. You can have two of the three, right? You can have it, you know, fast and good, but not cheap. You can have it fast and cheap, but not good, right? I think with this AI stuff, what if you started an agency that was the faster, better, cheaper agency? We'll do it faster, we'll do it better, and we'll do it cheaper. Guaranteed. Give us what your give us what your current agency is delivering, how long it takes them, and how much they charge you. We'll cut each one of those by 50% guaranteed. Pay us up front. There, I just started an agency. I'll be the external comms marketer cog in that wheel. Let's go, Corona. You're going you're gonna to take over your company, I have a feeling. Gen X, baby. Let's go. Only 12 people work for MidJourney and 11 arts um, soft, software developers. That's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, the, the, the risk of MidJourney is that they're, you know, they're kind of the worst of Silicon Valley cowboy types that are just like, fuck it, we trained it on everything. It, it makes cool pictures, dude. Um, so I have, I have a feeling they're going to get their asses sued to oblivion. So whether or not they can survive that, I don't know. But their shit's it's really good. So if, it, if, if they start to see themselves going down that path, they'll do what Stability AI did, which I think this is part of Stability AI's strategy, is they're open sourcing all their shit. Because I think the open sourcing it is a hedge against them getting sued out of oblivion or out of existence into oblivion. Uh, but it's amazing that, yeah, a 12, a 12 person company can do what Midjourney's do, doing. It's amazing. Easier to compete on price now. It is. The prompt guide is awesome. Yep. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. And it's just simple. And it's like, there's other more detailed prompt guides and they've gotten way more sophisticated since then, but it's just, it's just a solid place to start. And it, for me, what it did is seeing all those personas, you start to get your head around how deep these things are, how deep these large language models are. It's, it, it is, I find it impossible to actually comprehend how much power is at my fingertips. It's very intimidating. What's the website name? I don't know which, Oh, open art. Dot AI slash prompt book. Yep, that's right. Well, TikTok just jumped me to the bottom again. Damn you, TikTok. All right. I think I've been in here for a couple hours now. My butt's starting to get numb. <laughs> ah! All right. 
Yeah, it's 10 o'clock. I got work tomorrow. Man, that, those four days went fast. God damn it. I got to go back to worky work. <laughs> I've been playing with AI all friggin' weekend. Oh, I did a cool thing today. You want to see something fun? I had an idea to, where is it? Here it is. So I had an idea to, um, can you see that? Not really. You, you won't need to too much. I, I had an idea to do um, a video series of like self-help stuff, right? And so I used ChatGPT to help me find some things. And where's my, there they are. See, this is why, this is why I need um, search because I've got too many, because I show so many examples in here. I've got just a ton of crap. That's the workshop. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, whatever. I used I used ChatGPT to help me come up with some concepts for like some self help um, categories. So one of the categories I came up with was mindfulness, and then what I wanted to do was create um, a video script on different topics. So um, so we'll say um, cultivating patience. So we'll say um, living in the moment. So. So I used, there's a, so I'm, I'm in Google Sheets and I use the thing called um, GPT for Sheets where I've now got prompts and calls to open AI in the cells of this spreadsheet. So what I can do now is I can just write a, um, I can write a single topic and then I can basically go over and say, um, okay, What's a tool that will help me live in the moment? And so if I just pull this down, oh wait, I've got to, I've got to describe it first. So let me go over here. So if I pull this down, now it's going to write me a tool. So I want to live in the moment. It says the tool is called the mindfulness jar. So it automatically pulls out the mindfulness jar here. I don't know if you can, can you see this? Yeah, I think you can see it. Um, and then I can go to the intro. I got to make this a little smaller. Um, so the intro of the video. So I pull that down and it automatically writes the script. I'm Jessica, your mindfulness mentor. Today's topic is living in the moment. So it automatically writes the first part of the script. Then I come over and do the, um, oh, have it talk about the problem. So the problem is if you're not living in the moment, it writes that part of the script. Have you ever felt like life is passing you by, like you're constantly caught up worrying about the future? How does it do that? And then it automatically will write the on-screen copy for what's on, on screen in the video, <laughs> right? Isn't this insane? And then um, the next part of the story, so it'll write that. And then I can, so, so there it is by improving, um, you know, the, your ability to live in the moment, you may experience greater contentment, reduce stress and improve things. So, so right now I'm kind of just manually sort of pulling things down as I'm testing it, but this is a spreadsheet where I'll be able to just put in a category like mindfulness, have it generate 20 concepts and then have it generate a completely structured script for all of those videos. Then I'll be able to take that, dump it into Canvas Bulk Create, and just fucking spit out 20 videos for any subject imaginable. Fucking far out. And that was just me dicking around this afternoon. Now, it was actually figuring out how to break the prompts up in such a way that I could actually have like go across that thing and have it create the beginning of a story, the middle of a story and the conclusion of the story 
that was really stressful and that was hard writing. But 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 this is the thing. If when when you start to get your head around this, just the idea that you can put a request into the magic machine and the magic machine, if you get your request right, the magic machine will spit back magic. Everything kind of changes because you just go, you go from like if if I had the idea to to do that historically, I would have never pursued it because to execute that would, would require writers and video editors and just all sorts of nonsense. And now it doesn't. And so in an afternoon, I put together a thing there that if, if I spent two weeks on that, that would be like a fucking world class tool auto content generator probably for multiple kinds of output. Like, holy shit, tell me the world's not changed. Compliment or insult, the mom on everyone loves Raymond, always a question. Faster, better, cheaper, originates, what did you say there? Originates with the Austrian school. Oh, that's interesting. How do you monetize this channel? I don't, send me some money. <laughs> I don't, although when people send me roses, I think that turns into money. I don't know how to collect it yet because I'm old. <laughs> I don't know how to use TikTok. Um, I th there has actually that's a, it's a good point. So thank you very much for the roses. You don't have to do that, but I appreciate it. Um, so so people have asked me on the channel, you know, have I done a workshop or am I willing to do a workshop? So the answer is I haven't done one. I am willing to do one, but I don't want to do one just in a vacuum. So I, I have made a graphic. <laughs> so, so there's my graphic of a workshop. Um, but if you go to that link tree, if you go to link tree slash Kyle, uh, real Kyle Shannon, the first link there is to a Google form survey. It's just three questions asking if I did a workshop, basically what would you want to get out of it? And I'm trying to get as many people as I can to fill out that survey. I'm going to look at what you all write in that. No, that's not true. I'm going to have ChatGPT look at what you all write in that survey and, and, and sort of synthesize it for me. And then if I feel like a workshop, if I, if I can put together a workshop that I think is worth putting together, then I'll do it. Um, but I have a graphic for it now. So, so that's, that's, you know, one of, one of my philosophies about doing shit is like, you know, do it first and then figure it out second. So that's what I'm trying to do. So if, if you'd be willing to um, hop over there and fill out that survey, I would really appreciate it. But I, but I didn't start this channel as a monetization play. I, I started this channel because I actually think it's really important. I think we're in a, I think we're, we're, we're in the middle of a massive transformation that I think a lot of people are going to be blindsided by. And I personally really get off on the moment when people have this moment with AI, <laughs> the Kevin McAllister moment. Um, because it's really easy to di diminish it and demonize it and just ignore it right now. And I think that's actually very dangerous for all of us. So um, at some point, I'll figure out how to monetize this or not. I don't really care right now. I mean, I could use the money, <laughs> but that's not why it's that's not why this is here. I wish you'd be on for 24 hours, maybe starting Friday afternoon. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, not a troll. Your face is red. Maybe you need more sunscreen. No, I think my face is red just because of the uh, I could change the. Um, can I change my. Effects? No, it's not effects. It was something else. Oh, it was enhance. Shape filters. That's camel. See, look. See, there I look like a zombie. I don't know which one I was on. I was not on the one. I don't know which one I was on. Oh, I was on. Was I in dusk? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, see? See what you see what you did? <laughs> see what you did? <laughs> I'll go black and white for the rest of this one. I'm about ready to hang it up, so I'll go black and white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you palooka, see? Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah. What are you doing there with his AI stuff, see? Yeah, you palooka. <laughs> Where do I get access to that spreadsheet? That spreadsheet is just in my head right now. 
Um, but the the thing that makes the um, that does the AIing is called GPT for Sheets. So basically, what you do is it's just like an Excel formula you, where you hit equals and then you type in GPT, and there's a bunch of different options. But it's basically just a call to OpenAI. You put your OpenAI key in the settings, and then you write a prompt like you would normally write a prompt. But you basically say, go take the input from this cell and incorporate it into my prompt here, and then put the result of that in the next cell. And then I just sort of build the cells on top of one another. It's, it's fucking insane. And I'm not really good with Excel, so it's, it's a, it was a slow, painful, shame-filled process but i got it i got it kind of working all right let me do a couple more questions and then i gotta go to bed <laughs> I gotta go to bed. <laughs> and the tears were rolling down his face they were rolling down his face he looked so sad all right um you connect your PayPal and voila. I connect my PayPal to what? To this channel? Was that the person that asked how I monetize this? Cat Tamer. No, Cecil. I don't know what I connect my PayPal to. <laughs> I don't. My laptop blocked the chat GPT prompt is it safe? Wait, are you at, at um, <clears throat> chat.openai.com? Then, so, so one of two things happened. If you're in another country that blocks chat GPT, it's possible that your country is blocking it. So then I would say try bing.com. If you're in a country that doesn't block it, but you're not at that URL, you're probably at a scam site and it's some of your safety software that stopped it. So you got to be really careful. There, there's so many scam sites out there about this stuff. Happy you charted, started this channel, Kyle. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words as always, Emilio's wife. Go back to the original. I'll do that on the next one. You look good in black and white. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> it was a dark and steamy night. The storms had just passed through. There was lightning. There were garbage cans littering the streets. After GPT Sheets, did you say you move it to Canva to make the bulk videos? That's the plan. I haven't done it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'll get that I'll get that spreadsheet worked out and automated so I can just basically add a category and it'll generate 20 videos. Then I'll go to Canva's bulk create and I'll set up some video templates to, to do the text, the text elements. And then I'm going to take those scripts and I'm going to put them in 11 labs or in DID and synthesize the voice. And so the voice will be synthesized. The on-screen stuff will be text. I don't think I'm going to do animated people right now because they just look too creepy. But I don't know. I'm just experimenting. I'm just trying, like, like again, I, you know, what I would encourage you to do is, is just experiment with what's fucking possible. Like, like the, the thing I just showed with the Google Sheets, it's like, that was not possible, um, you know, a year ago. Like, what's it going to be a year from now? Like, when, when Microsoft incorporates that kind of power like natively inside Office 365 and Google incor incorporates BARD inside of all the Office things. And it's in Dropbox and it's in Slack and it's right, it's already starting to show up in all these different places. Like what's possible? I don't know, but every, every little experiment you do right now is going to serve you when this stuff just shows up. And when your boss comes to you and says, hey, hey uh, I don't know if you heard about it, but there's this new thing called AI and we're going to make a pivot toward AI. So uh, I want you to go ahead and figure that out there, Sally. <laughs> you know, don't be the Sally that's like, I've never heard of that. Be the Sally that's like, oh, you mean this? 
like Karuno here, secret cyborg. She's like, Brrr. at some point, the boss is going to come to her and, and be like, you know, I need you to figure this out. Oh, it's already figured out. <laughs> I'm taking over the company. <laughs> I've already talked to the board. You're out. <laughs> oh. To get the money. Oh, from the roses he met. Oh. At, at your TikTok profile on Creators Tools, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Ceci, thank you. Thank you. Yes, remedial TikTok help for old people is always appreciated. So how I'm going to monetize this channel is learn how to use TikTok. That's step one. So if, anything you can control. I'm teaching you about AI. You teach me about TikTok. See, it's a, it's a give and a take. Prompts.chat was blocked. Oh, prompts.chat was blocked. Hang on. Let me see. Maybe they maybe they let their that domain go dead. You can you can, there's another way you can find it. Let me just see if it's dead. Shit dies in this fast changing world. Prompts.chat. No, it's still showing up for me. Wait, let me reload it. It's still showing up for me. Go search for um, they just put it to prompts.chat. So your your DNS you you probably have something funky with your DNS that they're not honoring non-traditional domains or some shit like that there's probably some fucked up stupid ass it's probably comcast there's probably some xfinity fucking router problem not that i'm bitter about xfinity you're funny thanks i'm bitter bitter you betcha <laughs> do you have a youtube channel no but here's what i've learned see i'm learning more about this tiktok shit i've learned that these lives are recorded and I can download them. I hope it keeps them for longer than a fucking two, two or three weeks because I got to deal with it. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to download these and put them on a YouTube channel um, because there's most of them are just me like meandering and useless. But there's chunks in here that are probably, you know, worth like chapterizing and pointing to. But I don't right now. I mean, I've got... Um, if you go to storyvine.com, there's like 8 million videos of me talking about Storyvine. And I did a uh, I did a video series when we went into lockdown called An Extrovert's View from Within. So using Storyvine technology, I did a video a day, every day for a year, talking about what it was like to work out of this fucking office. And um, I think in a year, not missing a day, I got like 65 followers. <laughs> My TikTok channel, I'm about to hit 25,000. So I, I like I likes me some TikTok, but I'll, I'll get back to YouTube at some point. Um, Bing bulk, sh wait, Bing bulk sheets to can Canva. Yeah, it's so simple. It'll blow your mind. Yeah, exactly. It's it's crazy. What time is the AI salon tomorrow? It's at uh, 5 p.m. Mountain time. So 7 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Mountain lasts for two hours, and it's a it's a Google Meetup. So if you go to if you go to hang on, if you go to the salon.ai, there's a there's a link tree there. The Meetup, sign up for the Meetup, and then you'll be sent the Google the link to the Google Meet Hangout thing. And we can hang out. You can ask questions and meet some cool people that are geeking out on this shit. And it's really cool. Like it's what what's cool about the salon is it's like people from all different industries, all different levels of experience from people who work on like large language models, like Uber geeks to people that are like, I heard this AI thing's going to be a thing. And I think I, I'm here because I heard about it. Is that OK? <laughs> and like everyone in between. Which is, I assume, what these TikToks are like. Um, I use Canva every day and didn't know about this bulk create you speak of. Perhaps another day. Yeah, Silver Fox. It's um, if you go to, hang on. I forget what it's called in there. Where did I do Canva earlier? Canva. It's in apps. So there's a thing, there's bulk create is in there somewhere. Bulk. I think you have to pay for it. 
I'm gonna pay for it. Yeah. Wait, why is it not there? Well, is it not called Bulk Create? I thought it was called Bulk Create. Search for Bulk Create. Anyway, it's called Bulk Create. It's in there somewhere. Maybe they renamed it. But it's it's awesome. You just upload. Um, you upload a CSV file, and then you basically assign different columns to different elements on your layout. <laughs> and then it just goes, <laughs> <laughs> generates a bunch of pitches, generates a bunch of pitches or videos. I don't, I'm, I, I am like totally fucking clueless with Canva. So this was a great life. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and experience. AI will change the world. Thank you very much. Tin man. I appreciate it. All right. A couple of more. We're kind of at the bo bottom here anyway. Um, Kyle, can you call it tickety talk <laughs> like the other old folks do? <laughs> Marge, Marge, I'm on the tickety talk again. How do you, how do you turn this thing off? Can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Marge, why do I see myself? It's like a mirror, but different. I look old. Marge, is this how old I am? How do I turn this off? Hello? All right, I think that's enough. That's enough bad acting. That's enough overacting, 40s overacting. <laughs> Super immediate. Uh, I just wrote Casablanca movie script based on Russia invasion of Ukraine. Perfect, perfect case for um what is it called chat gpt and frankly my dear i don't give a damn <laughs> all right everybody i appreciate it thank you as always for hanging out with me you don't really don't have to do this especially on like you know fourth of july hopefully you're drinking beers and eating hot dogs and shit like that i hear fireworks now so the world is happening right outside these windows and i was here for you all right peace out everybody thanks as always I'll see you soon.